Hello and welcome back to my channel, Quirky What If. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the movie part of our series, What If Deku Had Zero One Driver. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Fyam78910 from fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. Prologue, Rising Deku. Not all people were made equal this is the lesson I've learned when I was 4 and once more at 14. I live in a world where 80% of the world have superpowers called quirks and because of this things once known as fantasy was now reality and a new career pro heroes. One would think I'd be one of the quirked. However I am 120% of the world I am quirkless I was essentially a second class citizen. But I didn't let that stop me. This is the story of how I became the number one pro hero and the first quirkless pro hero. I am Izuku Midoriya and I am Kamen Rider 01. All this started when the ex-pro hero All Might told me I couldn't be a hero. Izuku is very short for his age, his round face framed by a short mess of fluffy dark green hair which sticks up at odd angles around his head, casting noticeably dark shadows onto itself. His eyes are large and somewhat circular, their irises the same green color as his hair, and are usually stretched quite wide, giving him an innocent appearance. He has a set of four symmetrical freckles and diamond formations, one on each cheek, but despite these prominent traits, he is often described by others as being plain looking and he looked devastated. It had only been a few hours since All Might broke him. All men are not created equal, Izuku said silently as he walked home. Izuku cried as he went home to see his mother. Izuku's mother was a plump woman who had short hair with a ponytail on the left. She was in Ko Midoriya. Upon seeing Izuku crying, Inko ran towards her son and hugged him. It's okay baby, it's okay, Inko whispered as Izuku was crying on her shoulder. Hours passed and Izuku told her how All Might told him what the rest of the world told him in Katsuki bullying and everything that had happened to him and his thoughts about suicide. And Ko went from sadness to maternal fury at both All Might and Katsuki but that would be for later she need to heal her son and get him out of that horrid place called the school and sue them for everything they have. But that's for later but now her sons needs her and prayed that maybe just maybe Izuku can be the hero he was meant to be. Somewhere in a hospital. In a room where three people two people are wearing suits a man with a cat's head quirk and the woman with an elf ears like quirk. The third person is an old patient hooked up to machines but was failing. Ikigo sama please don't go. The elf woman said as tears came out of her eyes. Elise Chan please don't be sad for me but can I ask for one thing? Ikigo said. Anything Ikigo sama. The elf woman said. Sure that my great grandson becomes the hero he is meant to be. Ikigo said as he passed away and machine flatlined. For a moment there was silent then the cat head spoke. Elise what should we do? The cat head man asked. We follow Ikigo sama last wishes. Elise said as she makes a call. How will we do that we don't even who this guy is? The cat head man said. Elise ignored him and spoke to the person on the phone. Dr. Heise released CR5619 Project KR. Ryua is now activated. I repeat Project KR. Ryua is now activated. Elise said over the phone. In an underground laboratory. Within a laboratory a pod started to glow. This pod contains a young woman with long red hair that reaches her nicely shaped rear and a DD cup bust and a pair of cat ears atop her head and nothing else. As the pod opens up and the woman wakes up and opens her sliver eyes. She gets out of the pod and leaves towards a closet where she finds her clothes. After she puts on her clothes she walks towards a briefcase filled with the items needed for her new master path towards heroism. Izuku sama it's time. A young woman said as she went outside where a black car was waiting for her outside. A few weeks later at the Midoriya's home. Izuku was fast asleep as Inko was making katsudan for Izuku it had been a few weeks since Izuku told her everything about his life and Inko with all her maternal fury fully gutted all their middle school for everything they have. Turns out the principal wanted Izuku to kill himself so that he can be rid of him but Inko would not have it. She not only sued the school but also the principal and won a lot also the principal was arrested. Students were expelled teachers sacked and raised and Inko received a large compensation from the school board hoping that Inko won't sue them luckily for them her ire was towards the school, students and teachers that bullied her son. Izuku was then homeschooled by a young teacher that helped him rather than belittle him and he graduated middle school early and got to have a lot of free time. Oddly enough Katsuki family agreed to a settlement but they requested two things. 1. That Katsuki be allowed to a hero school of his choice. 2. That if both he and Izuku are in the same course in the same school they would be in different classes. Izuku acquiesces to this saying he would have allowed Katsuki to go to UA high anyway. Mitsuki Bakugo said that Izuku Midoriya is too good for this hellhole of a world. Inko couldn't help but agree with this. As Inko deep fries the pork she hears a knock on her door. She walks up to towards the door and opens it to reveal two men in suits and a nice lady with elf ears with short blue hair standing in between them. Hello are you Midoriya Inko? The elf lady asks. I am and you are. Inko asked. Elise Luce I wish this visit came at a better time and under better circumstances but I regret to inform you that your grandfather passed away. Elise said as she gave the grave news. Inko was shocked she couldn't believe that her grandfather was dead granted they didn't have the best relationship but still. 
When did it happen? Inko hesitantly asked. While you were sacking and raising Alder and Middle School to the ground, Elise said, I see, but may I ask why you are here? Inko said as Elise opened her briefcase and hands Inko a piece of paper. Inko looks at the paper and gasps. When? Inko asked. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. Elise said. We'll be there at 9.30 a.m. Inko said. Very well until tomorrow, Ms. Midoriya. Elise said as she and her goons leave. Inko looks at the paper and then towards Izuku's room. She sighs knowing that hopefully it will be something good. The next day. On the next day both Izuku and Inko got dressed for their outing a black car came up towards their home and let them in while in the car the a young girl around Izuku's age sitting with them she didn't interact with them but she looked at Izuku with a small smile on her face. Izuku unsurprisingly blushed and started muttering about how a girl looked at him. She just smiled back. Now the three of them arrived at a tall building where a big guard with a boar head looks at the three and asked. Midoriya Inko, Midoriya Izuku and Charlotte correct. The guard asked. Yes I'm Inko. Inko said. I am Midoriya Izuku. Izuku said with slight stutter. I am Anima Model CR5619 also known as Charlotte. Charlotte said. Both of the Midoriyas were confused about that but the guard paid no mind. Okay where you two are going is at the top floor follow the guard that will escort you there alright? Charlotte you know where to go right? The guard said. Yes soon my master's path to heroism will be open to him. Charlotte said with a smile. The Midoriyas didn't know what Charlotte was talking about but they shrugged and went on their way. Once they got to the top floor the Midoriya saw only a few people including an older man with black hair and black eyes wearing a business suit along with his daughter. The daughter is a fairly tall teenage girl with a rather mature physique, considering her age. She has long black hair that is normally tied into a spiky ponytail with a large strand hanging on the right side of her face and onyx eyes that point slightly inwards, which seems to resemble a cat. Next to them was the Elise and the cat head man and one other person which must be the lawyer. Good now that the Midoriyas are here now we can begin. I'm Leonardo Lionheart and I'm here to read Ikigo Seizenuma will now first off Naruto Yeirazu and Momo Yeirazu first Naruto. The lawyer said as Naruto nodded in the lawyer. You were always my buddy even thought I was way older than you. You confined me with your secret and made me the best man of your wedding and letting me name Momo. I know you were busy as all hell managing a company and making your kid happy trust me daughters are not easy to raise and who says otherwise should get a one-way ticket to the nut house. The lawyer said as everyone but Momo chuckled as she pouted. Either way I'm getting off track I'm leaving you with my golf clubs and gun collection for you a damn fish cake. The lawyer said as Naruto shakes his head. Even from the beyond grave you still call me that you damn strawberry. Naruto said as he started to cry as the girl now known as Momo comforted him. Now for Momo Yeirazu your part says the following. Momo when I first saw you I said to myself I'm going to spoil you rotten but when you're turned four that put a monkey wrench on my plans. The lawyer said as everyone in the room chuckled a bit while Momo blushed. I asked myself how I can give something to a little girl that can make any toy, dress and gemstone she wants. Then it hit me land, and yes sweets were another option but your mother was in her fitness phase at the time so yeah any who I present with a deed to your own private island for you and your friends to use as you see fit though you'll have to cover the cost of building the home itself though that should be easy with your quirk. The lawyer said as he gives Momo the deed. I'm grateful for this gift Ikigo Oji. Momo said as she wipes a tear from her eye. Now then this for both Elise and Gaoru. Both of you worked for my company for nearly two decades you both started at the bottom and nearly got yourselves at the top. Elise, Gaoru I know that you two plan on marrying each other for this I'm giving both of you 10 million USD for each of you as a wedding gift. The lawyer said as he allowed his statement to sink in. Wow I can't believe it. Gaoru said in disbelief. Of course Ikigo Sama knew. Elise said as she shook her head with a smile on her face. Everyone in the room offered their congratulations and such after a bit they got back to the will. But that's not all Gaoru congratulations you are now president of the company make me proud. And for Elise you told me how your mother pawned off her brooch to fund your education well turns out that particular brooch comes in a set I not only found yours but also the others just for lols. The lawyer said as he gives a wooden box with the full set of brooches. All my hard work paid off I can believe it president Gaoru loose. Gaoru said. My mother's brooch it's been so long, thank you Ikigo-sama. Elise said as she held on to said brooch. Now for the Midori as Ikigo-sama prepared a video for you two regarding your part of the will. The lawyer said as he plays said video. As the video starts to play they got to see Ikigo he was a giant of an old man wearing a dark green suit with a black necktie his hair was mostly gray with some green highlights on the tips. He also has green eyes pierces the soul. He was Ikigo Seizenuma. Hello is this thing on? Ikigo asks only to receive an unsaid confirmation. Okay good now then I'm Ikigo Seizenuma and well I'm dead and I have to say it's about damn time seriously you try being 150 and watching your family and friends bite the dust before you do and know it's not a joke. Anywho let's get down to business and co as you know I loved you as any granddad would love his grandkid but I still think you were pretty dumb when you married Hisashi. And I was right the only good thing about that union is little Izuku. The people of the table were dumbfolded as the listen to Izuku knew that Ikigo liked him but not his dad which was wired. And Ko on the other hand knew that her grandfather laughing it up in heaven knowing that he was in the right all along. She didn't tell Izuku about the divorce and kept it a secret. Until Izuku told her, Mom I know about the divorce you and dad had. 
Izuku said as everyone looked at Izuku and Inko went wide-eyed. How long? Inko asked, since I was seven kasen. Izuku said as he gave a small smile. Grandpa said he was no good for me but like a moron I didn't listen to him but like Grandpa said you're the only good thing that marriage gave me. Inko said as she hugged her son. Momo and Elise found this cute after a bit and Ko lets go of Izuku and play the video once more. Now then as you know Hisashi cheated on you. But I contacted the woman he was cheating on and she told me she had no idea that Hisashi had a wife or a son after I gave her a bit of info. And bribed her she called the cops on Izuku's sperm donor and now he's rotting in jail cell right now. In a US prison to be precise so he won't be long for this world. Anyway I contacted the Midoriya family and told them about everything that had happened and they said that you and Izuku were worthier of the Midoriya surname than Isashi ever was. They're giving you some cash 100 grand yen for the each of you and I will be giving you and co 20 million USD for having to deal with that asshole. 2 2 20 million USD for being with Isashi thank you so much grandpa. And co with a gigawatt smile. Naya that smile is looking at the Amaterasu son. Aeora said as Momo gave a pair of sunglasses to which he took them. Congratulations Ms. Midoriya. Naruto said with as he had a pair of sunglasses on. It's no problem ye irazu san and call me Inko. Inko said with the same smile. Now for you Izuku I've looked upon your life and I have to say I admire your courage to keep going forward with your dream despite everyone saying you can't. Ikigo leans forward towards the screen and says something Izuku will eternally gratefully forever. I'm not like that Izuku for I believe and know I'll do something better I'll give you four things. 1. 10 billion USD. 2. The power to surpass all might himself. 3. An anima class model which can be his maid, bodyguard and if need be a lover. 4. And finally the words you should have heard when you were 4 years old. Everyone leaned forward to hear this as they wanted to know what those words are. Only Izuku and Inko know exactly what those words are. Within a laboratory in the same building, we find Charlotte looking a 3D printer making something she smiles know it was time for her master to rise up to be the greatest hero. I will give you the words your doctor has denied you. As the device was completed and she placed the device in a briefcase where there were 19 SD keycard devices. I will give you the words your friend has denied you. She closed the briefcase and walks towards the elevator with briefcase in hand. I will give you the words your mother has denied you. The elevator goes up until it reaches to where the others are reading the will. I will give you the words your idol has denied you. You Izuku Midoriya can become a hero. Izuku cried tears of joy which in turn created a terawatt smile that rivaled the sun which caused Momo to create heavy-duty welding masks for everyone but Izuku. You sure the kid is quirkless cause I'm pretty sure that counts as a damn quirk? Asked Aeora pointing at Izuku's smile. I triple checked his medical file and he is indeed quirkless. Elise said as she hands him said file. Fifteen minutes later. Now Izuku this is a great responsibility and try to keep the injuries to a minimum alright. Well then that all I have to say I wish you all a good life for all of you guys alright. Farewell everyone. The video ended and everyone got up to leave everyone was happy with what they got and they were glad to see their friend for one last time. Izuku if you ever need any help investing don't hesitate to give me a call alright. Naruto said as he hands Izuku a business card. Thank you yayorazu san Izuku said as Naruto laughed. Call me Naruto Izuku cause in my book you're a friend to the family. Naruto said. You can call me Momo if you want Izuku. Momo said as Izuku blushes. Even Momo. Izuku said as the two left. It took a few seconds to realize what he had done. I talked to a girl of my age group. Izuku shouted. Indeed you have Izuku-sama. Charlotte said as she bows. Inko shook her head but then had a thought. Um Charlotte are you by any chance a anima unit grandpa told us about? Inko asked. Yes I am Inko-sama. Charlotte said. Inko thought back at what her grandfather said and went pale. I'm too young to be a grandma. Inko shouted. A few days later. A few days had passed after the reading of the will Izuku along with Charlotte, Katsuki and a friend he made in his new middle school, Yuzuhara Middle School. After all there was sacked and raised all of the students save for those that were expelled were transferred to new schools as such for one Katsuki Bakugo that school was a big reality check for him turns out all there was modifying his grades so that could go to UA high lucky for him 51% was all done due to his work ethic the other 49% was modified. Despite getting the majority grade but Katsuki still needed help at school so he swallowed his pride and asked for help the teacher gave him said help in the form of Shizuka Yuzuhara. Shizuka was essentially the valedictorian of her middle school, daughter of the school principal and the only one in the entire world that has three quirks. Brain enhancement, telepathy and telekinesis she too was going to the UA hero course as for why it was to prove herself. She was a few centimeters shorter than Bakugo with her long black hair tied to a ponytail with a bow and wearing her school uniform and the reason for her wanting to prove herself was her eyes. They were milky white meaning she was blind. Even Katsuki knew that she's strong as much as it pained him to admit that. Hell she's stronger and far more badass that she's taking the hero exam blind. She had lost her eyesight due to a villain attack and her father believed she could have saved her eyesight if she was using her telekinesis quirk but due to how the laws are in place she couldn't so he is working hard to implement a self-defense law which will allow civilians to use their quirks on villains. Either way everyone was in All Might Land where he told him and Shizuka about the will and everything. Damn Deku you won the fucking lottery shame your great grand pop bit the dust. 
Katsuki said. To be fair Katsuki his great-grandfather was over 150 years old. Shizuka said. Not fair point Brainiac. Katsuki said with a shrug. Still though Izuku is a trillionaire in Japanese terms but still. Shizuka said still in shock that Izuku is that rich. Catch and don't let this change how we are. Izuku asked. The fuck you talking about Deku nothing has changed I'm still going to be the number one pro hero and Brainiac is gonna be number two and you're going to be a Deku. A rich Deku but a Deku nonetheless. Katsuki said as Shizuka slapped the back of his head. Not with that attitude Bakego. Shizuka said as Katsuki grumbled as he wasn't stupid enough to yell at a blind girl in public. I'm still going to be a hero catching no matter what you say. Hizuku said determined to see his dream through. Katsuki was about to say something until. BBBOOMMM. That happened. An explosion occurred nearby as Izuku rushed towards to where the explosion was that's where Izuku saw them a man in a lab coat on a metal walker and surrounding him was a unit of robots with a big robot by his side. Okay people listen up I am Dr. Machina and I am here to ruin your day and take back what is mine now then robots attack. Dr. Machina shouted as the robots attacked. As soon as the robots started attacking, the people went in a panic and started to run for it the theme park was being destroyed Izuku just looked at what was happening until Bakugo grabbed him. Come on Deku let's get the hell out of here. Bakugo said as he tries to drag Izuku away from the fight. Keyword try until a scream was heard. Oh and Ichan help me. A young voice shouted. The voice came from a young girl that has a tadpole-like appearance. She has large eyes with three upper eyelashes and notably small eyebrows. She has light tan skin and her mouth is usually set in a pout-like shape. Her dark green hair is worn in low pigtails. It looked like she had fallen. Satsuki, Samadar stay here. Another female voice said. This voice belonged to a short girl of a relatively slender build. She also has notably large hands. Her appearance is rather frog-like, she has a very wide mouth, which dips down a little in the middle just like that of a common frog, and oval-shaped eyes with large, black irises, their lower eyelashes visibly pronounced. And she also demonstrates some frog-like mannerisms, like hopping on all fours instead of running, and holding herself in a way that is somewhat connotative of a frog she also has a e-cup bust. Her hair is a dark sea green color, and is very long, reaching all the way to her waist, the ends tied together at the bottom in a bow of hair. She has two shoulder-length clumps framing her face, and shorter bangs between her eyes, some of them partially swept to each side. With her was a little boy that has black hair that obscures his right eye, dark green eyes that are seen half-closed, and a frog-like appearance. He has blush marks on his cheeks. Hi Tsui one Sam. Samadar said as he watched his sister runs towards the robot that was about to fire its laser. Tsui managed to get Satsuki but froze as she saw the robot was about to fire. She closed her eyes accepting her and her sister's demise until someone pushed both her and her little sister out of the way. Suyu looks at who saved her it was Izuku Midoriya. He somehow got out of Bakugo's grip and saved them. Hey you two alright? Izuku asked. We're fine only Ai-chan. Satsuki said. Yes thank you for saving my sister and Aitsuyu said as the large robot got in front of them. Izuku and the others looked up at the robot they both separated as the robot slammed down Suyu and Satsuki on one side and Izuku in another. Izuku saw that the robot was going towards the frog-like girls. Izuku saw a rock on the ground and threw it at the robot catching it attention. The robot turned around and faced Izuku. Izuku felt stupid in doing that but was glad that he could save those girls but then he remembered. Charlotte the case. Izuku shouted. In an instant Charlotte appears with briefcase in hand. By the time Charlotte appeared news crews and a certain blonde pro hero in his small might form appeared. Izuku-sama what do? Charlotte started to ask until Izuku interrupted her. Charlotte does that device really have the power to surpass all might? Izuku asked. As Izuku said that everyone was muttering about how crazy he was even all might believed that that was not possible. It is Izuku-sama but what does it have to do? She said until Izuku interrupted her once more. People started to go crazy as Charlotte has confirmed this. All Might thought. The fuck you said Deku. Katsuki shouted wanting to deny what Deku was saying. Impossible. Shizuka said as she covered her mouth. Just give to me quick. Izuku said as Charlotte nods. Of course Izuku-sama. Charlotte said as she takes out the device and yellow green key card and gave it to Izuku. Please put on the 01 driver if you would be so kind. Charlotte said as Izuku takes said driver. Izuku places the driver on his waist where a belt came out of it and wrapped around Izuku. Zero one driver. As soon the driver said that Izuku felt like he was flying soon he was past the clouds then the stars and finally a satellite. Z satellite databanks. Izuku opened his and saw a white void filled with ones and zeros he could only ask one thing. Where am I? Izuku asked. You are within the Z satellite databanks this is where the source of your power resides. Charlotte said. What really? But how did I get here? Izuku said. Your mind was transferred here when you placed the driver on you for the first time and your body is currently helpless until training is complete. Charlotte said, What training how will train if I'm about to die? Izuku shouted but Charlotte didn't seem to mind. By my calculations you 10 seconds in real time until you die however as long you are in the databanks what would be seconds there will be months here. Charlotte said, I, I see then that I have an AI processing power. Izuku said as Charlotte shakes her head. No your thought processing now rivals that of an AI supercomputer. 
Hizuku-sama, please activate tutorial mode so we can begin. Charlotte said. Okay, Charlotte, let's do this. Izuku said as he picks the only option available to him. Tutorial mode activated. Nine seconds later. Nine seconds had passed and the robot was about to fire when Izuku woke up. Learning complete. Izuku said as the robot fired its laser eyes. Izuku without hesitation presses the button on the keycard then places it on the card scanner. Jump. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E. After he did this the Z satellite shot a beam towards Izuku's location where it collided with the robot's beams where it produced smoke and dust. As soon as both subsided in front of Izuku was a giant mechanical grasshopper it soon started to hop around Izuku where it was at this moment Mount Lady, Gang Orca and Kamui Woods appeared. Gah GGG grasshopper. Mount Lady shouted. What the hell is that kid doing? Kamui Woods asked recognizing Izuku. No idea but we keep watch and act when needed. Gang Orca said as the other heroes nod. Meanwhile Izuku opened the key card and then placed it but before he placed it he said one word that would synonymous to his hero form and to heroes of the past. Henshin. Izuku shout as he placed the key card inside the driver. P-R-O-G-R-I-S-E. To be I ga rise. Rising hopper. As a drum beat with some techno music plays Izuku's body is covered by a black jumpsuit and the mecha grasshopper makes another jump and turns into code then into armor parts resembling the grasshopper and a yellow green and black attache case appears on his right hand. A jump to the sky turns to a rider kick. Dr. Machina sees this and is shocked. Who are you? The shouted. Zero one and I'm the one person that can stop you. Zero one said as he points at him. Both doctor and robot were stunned but at that moment this gave Izuku enough time to give a powerful punch to the robot knocking it back. Izuku then rushes towards the robot and starts fighting it the machine dodges a bit then it tries to sweep Zero One's legs but Zero One jumped to dodge it but may have put a little too much power in said jump. As Izuku went down he looked around to find the only two. What happened was the EEHHH. Zero One shouted as looks to see the robot from the top of the roller coaster. With the froggy sisters. Sugoi, Oni Ai chan jumped higher than Uni chan Satsuki said. Wow he did Ikiro. Suyu said with a small blush. Say Ni-chan will he be your boyfriend? Satsuki asked. Satsuki. Suyu shouted as her face went red. Both sisters didn't notice the smaller robots coming towards them. Back with Zero One. My god these legs are awesome. Zero One said as he puts one of his legs on the railing to see it. But then the robot shot lasers from its eyes. Zero One seeing jumps down from the roller coaster blocking the laser with his arms causing him no damage. Once he was near the robot he punched it once more making it stagger. Zero One was about to go after the big robot when the smaller ones were chasing the frog like sisters Izuku ran towards the robots. Get out here now. Zero One said as the sister ran towards the crowd Izuku fight off the smaller robots as are the other heroes help unknowingly to Izuku Bakugo picked up the attache case that Izuku dropped. Oi, Beku catch. Bakugo says as he eats the case to Zero One nailing him in the head. Ouch, catch him that hurt. Izuku yelled while everyone sweat tripped. While Bakugo was laughing his ass off, Zero One as he picks up the case he then starts using the case as a weapon but then his eyes widen as he then pull one side of the case and pulled it upwards to reveal that it was a sword. The L-A-D-R-I-S-E. Tada. Zero One said as he uses the sword. Bakugo stopped laughing when he saw this. You got to be kidding me it's a fucking sword. Bakugo shouted. As Zero One and the other heroes were fighting the smaller robots a young woman was watching the fight with excitement in her eyes. The woman in question resembled Momo Yeirazu except her hair is in a short pixie cut and her breasts were larger like around a G cup. Yeah get them kick its mechanized ass. A young woman said as one of the smaller robots tries to kill the young woman but the young woman pulls the robot towards her puts it in a headlock and points a gun at its head and shoots it. All while laughing. With Zero One. The robot falls on the parking lot ground after Izuku punched it. The robot fired at lasers but Zero One does a backflip to dodge it. The robot then tosses a few cars at Izuku but he just jumps on them while dodges the robot's attacks. The robot then proceeds to throw a bus. Izuku goes through the bus through the front window and back window then punches the robot hard making it stagger. Ami Otom Reru no Watata Hitori or Da. Zero One and he presses the side of the driver. Rising impact. Zero One launches the robot into the air with a kick that creates an energy projection of a grasshopper leg. He then jumps into the air and kicks the robot downward. As the robot falls toward the ground Izuku performs a kick and breaks through the robot's body. Unknown to Zero One people and the four heroes began to recognize the kick from a bygone age. Holy shit. Gang Orca shouted. No way. Kamui Woods said. It can't be. Mount Lady said. Is that the rider kick? All Might said as he recognized the kick. Ra. I. Zai. And. Do. I. And. Pa. Two. Two. Rising impact. After destroying the robot Izuku lands on the ground and causes some minor damage however he sprains his ankle and lands on a popcorn stand. Gang Orca sees this and runs towards Zero One. Hey you alright kid? Gang Orca asked. I'll be fine. Zero One said as he lies back down. The world now knew who Zero One is and many people especially those of older generations knew that he was a Cayman writer but what they don't is that he is quirkless dot 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 yet. With All Might. All Might couldn't believe his eyes but that boy was the very same boy that he told that he couldn't be a hero. 
But this boy showed him that he has something that only comes once in every generation, the soul of a true hero. And All Might missed his chance in front of him was the perfect successor for one for all and he lost it. Why bother offering it to him if he has the power to surpass him? With a heavy heart he leaves the park knowing that he had found the perfect successor but missed his chance. Maybe Night Eye's choice will be best. All Might said but knowing he was just lying to himself as he walked away. No one noticed Small Might leaving as everyone was talking about how the legendary Rider Kick was performed. And soon news crews would tell the story of the debut, Return of the Cayman Riders. One person even coined the term, the first rider of the Riwa era, Cayman Rider 01. Unknown location, but not all like this new change. So my student what do think? An older man said, he's just a noob with epic grade loot. A young man said, am I knew I saw him before. Another old man said, you do Dr. Well who is he? A young man asked, his name is Izuku Midori I told him he could never be a hero but it seems I was wrong. The doctor said, I see Tamura keep an eye on him. The older man said, Hi Sensei, Tamura said. As Tamura said this the old man wonders what changes he would bring. Cayman Rider 01. The old man said, Chapter 1. Wait what's a Cayman Rider? T. The pro hero shouted, What do you mean we can't arrest him he's a vigilante and should punish to such? A pro hero said, The pro hero is tall, sturdily built man with a very muscular physique. He has short crimson hair which he wears spiked up around his head and sharp light blue eyes. His beard and mustache appear to be made of fire, but when he voluntarily turns off the flames on his face a small amount stubble shows around his jaw. His hero costume is comprised of a tight, navy turquoise bodysuit with lines of flame streaming across his chest, upper torso, arms and most prominently his shoulders. He uses his flames as a makeshift mask around his eyes, and the tall boots he wears appear to be either made of fire themselves or constantly left alight, as only their soles and laces are visible around the flames. He sports white bracers on his lower arms, styled in a cage pattern, and a blue belt with a pouch attached on either side. He was the number two pro hero endeavor. He came to capture the villain known as Dr. Machina and take the glory but a vigilante with a transformation quirk stopped the villain before he arrived and now a police officer is telling him he can't arrest him. Why? The officer as if reading his mind told him, I'm sorry but we legally can't arrest him due to him being quirkless. An officer said as he places Izuku at the front of the cruiser. This threw the pro heroes and Endeavor off the loop for a moment, but before Endeavor could get a word out Mount Lady beat him to it. Wait he's quirkless, Mount Lady said. Yeah the current vigilante law only applies to only the quirk not the quirkless. The officer said, huh it only affects the quirked. Kamui Woods said, this made Endeavor angry a vigilante is a vigilante regardless of who they are. Yes, yeah, since 80% of the population is quirked people thought that there was no way a quirkless person would become a vigilante until now. The officer said, really how irrational. A man's voice said, the person is a slender and tall pale skinned man with messy, shoulder length black hair that partially hangs in front of his face and often half opened black eyes. He is usually recognized for his worn out appearance, often appearing as if he just rolled out of bed. His facial hair remains unkempt and his eyes almost always look tired and flat. He sports a ragged black outfit that consists of a long sleeve shirt and matching pants that tuck into his boots. He also wears a utility belt and his signature wrap scarf at all times. He hides a pair of yellow goggles underneath his scarf for when he needs to use them in battle. He is Shota Aizawa and he is known as the Erasure Hero, Eraserhead. So you mean to tell me he gets off scot-free while we clean up his mess? Shota said as the officer nods. The officer gets to his car and leaves to the station leaving the heroes to wonder about what is going on. Well shit I'll look at the Pro Hero Law Book to review it. Kamui Wood said as the other heroes but Shota nod. As they left Shota picked up his phone call a certain mouse. Nezu it's me, Shota said. He heard Nezu asked where Midoriya went. Yeah they carried the problem child to the station. Shota said. He swore that he heard the rat bastard laughing. Anyway it's your problem not mine in case you forgot I got expelled from UA High remember. Shota said with a smirk knowing he got the last laugh. He heard some grumbling from the rat and asked him to keep an eye on him. Fuck karma bit me in the ass once more oh well. Shota said as he hung up. He left to follow the cruiser that was headed for the station. But Shota knew one thing for sure is that things are about to change in a big way. Nusutafu Police Station Izuku felt nervous when he arrived at the police station but thankfully they told them that he was not in trouble. In fact they wanted to ask his part in the fight and where he got the Zero One driver. Izuku was relieved at this and told them what he knew that the driver was his inheritance and how he fought. The officers thanked him and let him go. But before he went he asked about Dr. Machina and it turns out his attack was somewhat justified his son illegally sold the rights of some of his robots to the owner of All Might Land and now both him and the son are arrested for possession of stolen property and selling stolen property respectively. Dr. Machina himself was given a slap on the wrist since no one got hurt though he was a bit miffed that his robot was destroyed by Izuku. After he got out of the station he was bombarded by flashes of cameras and the clamoring of reporters. Are you zero one? Where did you get that device? Will you get a sponsorship from Toei and Bandai? Are you single? Will you be a vigilante or will be pro-hero? Izuku was getting overwhelmed until his savior in the form of the Eirazu's bodyguard. 
Let's go, Mr. Midoriya, the bodyguard said as he got him into the limo. Within the he found his mother, Charlotte, Naruto, and Momo. Ka-san, Charlotte-san, Naruto-san, Momo-san. Izuku said as his mother hugged him. Izuku, you my baby. And Ko shouted as starts muttering and crying a storm about how reckless he was. And Ko saw me you're muttering and staining the leather. Charlotte said as Inko stopped. I'm glad you're okay Izuku but still that was reckless of you. Momo said. I know but I had to do something. Izuku said as he looked like a kicked puppy. Momo thought as she now feel bad for admonishing Izuku. Anywho we're all glad Izuku is alright but there's still a problem. Naruto said as everyone in the car looked at him. Yes Izuku I've been receiving calls from both Toei and Bandai when you performed the rider kick. Inko said. Oh no are they going to sue us? Izuku shouted fearing the worse. Oddly enough no they actually want to meet you Izuku both the owners of Toei and Bandai want to meet you sweetie in a few days. Inko said as Izuku calmed down. Oh I see I'll be happy to see them as the people are giving me the moniker of Kamen Rider but I've never heard of them. Izuku said not knowing what a Kamen Rider is. All I know of them is that Bandai used makes toys about them but that's it. Momo said with a shrug. Of course you don't know of it madam it was a pre-quirk era television show made in Japan it started in the 1970s and ended in May 1st 2019. The limo driver of all people said. May 1st 2019 that's the start of Japan's Ryoa era and the day the glowing baby was born in Kinking China. Izuku said as the driver nodded. That's right due to the civil unrest that followed many tokusatsu shows which included Kamen Rider were halted until further notice and it's a shame most of them were good shows. The driver said. Well I'm sure that your meeting with Toei and Bandai will sort things out. The limo driver said as Izuku nods. The limo drops off the Midoriyas at their home and they slept until the next few days. A few days later, within a local restaurant in Tokyo, Izuku and Nko were at a local restaurant at a private venue with the CEOs of Toei and Namco Bandai. All of them were eating their meals until one of these CEOs spoke. Mr. Midoriya, I'll be frank we like for you to sign a contract for us. The Toei CEO said as he pulls out said contract. Well I mean yeah I will sign it but I kind of want to learn about Cayman Riders. Izuku said as the Toei CEO and Namco Bandai CEO both nodded. Of course Mr. Midoriya we would be honored to teach you of your predecessors of the Showa and Haize eras. The NBC CEO said as they finished their meals. Toei Company, Limited. Everyone was now in the company building that made the Cayman Rider TV show and Izuku was looking at the statues of his predecessors. From Ikigo to Zayo Izuku saw them as his senpais. All of them were heroes in their own right from Ikigo saving the world from Shocker to Zayo abdicating his right of being ruler of the world to save his friends. Can I really be like them? Izuku asked himself. Izuku knew that he had big shoes to fill or in this case big belts. He knew he needed to be the rider that begins the Ryuwa era in earnest. His mother also looks at the statues and wonder she smile knowing that Izuku will not only be like them but surpass them. Mother and son now know what to do. They sign the contract thus making Izuku an official Cayman rider. Thanks so much for this honor. Izuku said. Don't worry young man we know that you'll be the greatest Cayman rider yet. The Toei CEO said. After the two left they went around Tokyo for a bit before taking the train home. During the train ride to Musutafu. Izuku was still wide awake as his mother was asleep. Izuku was silently muttering about what to do during his time before the UA entrance exam. He decided to train his body to have more stamina and muscle. During this time an older man was looking around for something or someone. Okay okay I need to just need to find her and the boss would get me my fix. The older man said. The older took another look around for a bit until his eyes widened. He had found her. His target was a short girl of slender yet feminine build. She is fair skinned with a perpetual blush on her cheeks. Her eyes are large and round, their iris is a warm brown, with rather thick upper eyelashes, two longer and more prominent ones protruding outwards on either side and fewer but more individually pronounced lower eyelashes. Shoulder length and about the same color as her eyes, her hair is bobbed and curved inwards at the ends, two longer clumps taking the same shape on either side of her face, and short bangs that reach roughly a quarter of the way down her forehead. On the top inner segment of each of her fingers, she has a small pink pad, somewhat resembling the toe of a cat or a dog's paw, which she uses when activating and deactivating her quirk. She was wearing a white blouse hiding her D-cup bust and denim shorts. Okay there she is now take the trigger and get her to the boss. The older man said as he takes an injector and injects himself. The effects were instantaneous the older man began to transform into a giant bat-like creature scaring the passengers. The girl looked at the bat creature as he snatched her away. H-H-H-E-L-L-L-P-P-P. The girl shouted as she was taken away. Izuku seeing this puts on the 01 driver and takes out the rising hopper key. Jump. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E. Henshin. Izuku shouted as he places the key in the driver. P-R-O-G-R-I-S-E. To be I a rise. Rising hopper. A jump to the sky turns to a rider kick. As Izuku transformed into 01 he was about to jump out of the train to save the girl until Charlotte stopped him. Izuku Sama you won't be able to keep up with him on foot but I have something that can help but first. Charlotte said as she takes out a gun and a magenta progress key with a pigeon of all things on it. Trace. Progress key confirmed ready to utilize. Pigeon's ability. After the announcement she presses the trigger. Track and KABAN shot. As she fired the shot it turned into a pigeon and latched on the kidnapper before vanishing. 
When this happens, Zero One sees Map with the kidnapper as a blinking light. I can see where he is going, thank you, Charlotte. Zero One said as Charlotte gives him a black smartphone. Oh, what's this? Zero One asked as he turns on the phone. Kate Rice. Zero One Rice phone. Scan and find out. Charlotte said as Zero One scanned the key. Moto Rice. Rice Hopper. After it said that a giant version of the Zero One Rice phone smashed through the train's roof. Izuku Sama, please press the bike app on the phone. Charlotte said. Hope I don't have to pay for this. Zero One said as he presses the bike app. Changing to Superbike Motorcycle Mode. After that announcement, the giant smartphone transforms into a motorcycle. The bike has a base of a Honda CRF450L with the colors of Zero One. People were taking pictures with their phones, including another girl of medium height, possibly set a little more broadly than some of her other female classmates, with healthy thighs. Due to her quirk, her skin is a light shade of pink, and she has rather square eyes. They're clear black and their irises bright yellow, with notably long eyelashes below and around the sides. Her face is framed by short hair, fluffy and unruly, which is a pleasant pink color, slightly darker than that of her skin. She has two thin, pale yellow horns protruding from her head, hooked squarely and leaning diagonally to opposite sides, which are seen to be slightly flexible, able to bend a little to each side. With her is a muscular young man of average height, with a rather impressive physique, despite his young age. He has red eyes that are pointed slightly inwards, and a small scar just above his right eye. He also has small eyebrows and very pointed teeth. His hair is reasonably short, dyed a bright red, and spiked away from his head at all angles with gel. Two more pronounced tufts spiked on either side of his forehead like little horns, this lofty style taking a full three minutes to set. That is so manly Mina, the young man said as Zero One drove off. So true I Jiro so very true, Mina said. As all of this was happening and Koja saw all of this and was flabbergasted at all this so she did what any mother would do. My baby boy, and Ko shouted as Zero One drove off. With Zero One. Zero One was driving along following the signal of the kidnapped girl he was dodging cars and making sharp turns to catch up with the kidnapper. As he was doing this a blur was catching up to him what looked like a suit of armor with exhaust pipes coming out of his elbows. The suit of armor is Tensei Ada also known as the Turbo Hero Ingenium. Sir I need to ask to. The armor started to say until Zero One interrupted him. Sir a kidnapping had just occurred now is not the time to slow down. Zero One said as the suit of armor gasped. When did this happen? The armor asked. Just now a friend of mine put a tracking device on the kidnapper. Zero One said. Then let's go sit us. The armor said as he took a good look at Zero One. Are you by any chance Cayman Rider Zero One? The armor asked. I am but right now we have bigger priorities. Zero One said as he speed up with the armor close by. At a warehouse near the docks. At some warehouse rooftop there was a woman spying on some cruel monsters all of them are wearing expensive clothes or were of high social standing. All of them were about indulging the flesh of young girls. And their leader was a beautiful woman who only seemed to age gracefully. Long black hair, slender amber eyes, red lips with a full-bodied figure that even her dark red suit couldn't hide. She was Chacha AI an ex-pro hero known as Lady Envoy. The woman that was spying on them is a tall and curvaceous with sky blue eyes, which tilt downwards in the center, framed by a set of rather long eyelashes. She has abundant spiky dark purple hair which is made up of layers of varying lengths, the longest ones reaching down below her waist. Her chin-length bangs that are split into three sections, two swept to the sides and one over her face, going diagonally down to the left between her eyes. She also has a small mole under her left eye, as well as red-painted nails. Her hero costume is very similar to one of a traditional dominatrix. She wears a black leather breastless leotard over a white bodysuit, which emphasizes her breast, body and legs, the leotard possessing red gemstone-like accessories in a vertical pattern from the collar to the midriff. She also wears translucent black thigh-high stockings and black knee boots. She has a small, red mask outlining her eyes, a handcuff on each wrist, and a red utility belt decorated with gold studs around her hips, a matching pentagonal buckle in its center. She is often seen carrying a flogger-style whip. The white bodysuit is made of thin material that is easily rippable so she can more easily use her quirk. She is Narumi Kayama, also known as the R18 Plus Hero Midnight. She had heard of such gathering from police reports and decided to investigate. She would have never thought that her old idol Lady Envoy would be behind this. According to her findings she had been using her quirk Red Roses to alter the minds of young girls from 13 to 21 years of age and using them to grow her influence and fortune. Midnight knew she needed to stop this she also knew that one whiff of the stuff Envoy's roses made would make her into a doll a sex doll if the reports are true. Damn it all, Midnight said as the bat monster came down and entered the warehouse. She was about to take action when she heard the sound of two engines roaring. Upon hearing it she smiled. Within the warehouse, Boss I brought the girl. The bat monster said, Oh wonderful the star attraction Achako Yuraka. Envoy said, What do you want from me? The now named Achako yelled, Simple one of my clients wants you. Envoy said as she booped her nose. Why me? Achako asked as tears came out of her eyes. Like I said a client of mine wanted you now be a good girl and smell the roses. Envoy said as she was about to activate her quirk until she heard the sound of an engine. Oh what's that? Achako said as she hears it as well. Did you get followed? Envoy pointy said. 
No, I didn't, boss. The bat monster said as the warehouse doors busted open. As the dust settled, they reviled both Zero One and Ingenium. What the how did you find this place? Envoy shouted. A friend of Zero One had placed a tracker on your bat minion. Ingenium said. Envoy looked at bat monster with rage in her eyes. Well then I hope you like the smell of roses. Envoy said as she used her quirk at Ingenium and Zero One. Ingenium felt an excruciating pain as Zero One felt nothing. Um is that supposed to do something? Zero One asked. Why well, you're supposed to be screaming in pain. Envoy yelled angry and surprised that wasn't working. I can explain that. A muffled voice said. Said voice belonged Charlotte who was wearing a gas mask. The Zero One armor is equipped with a filter to combat gas attacks and gaseous quirks like yours are Midnight's. Charlotte said as Midnight appeared. Oh what a shame Lady Envoy. Midnight said in a slurry tone. Zero One was glad that the suit covered his face as well otherwise he would be blushing like a tomato. Anyway izuku sama I suggest that you use this progress key. Charlotte said as she gives Izuku a light blue progress key with a penguin on it. I'm okay then. Zero One said as he removes the rising hopper key and presses the button of the new key. Hurricane. He then scans the new key. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E. A light blue beam come down from the sky and make a mechanized penguin it squawks at Lady Envoy then at Zero One who inserts the key into the driver. P-R-O-G-R-I-S-E. Spinning Cyclone. Storming Penguin. Upon inserting the key the penguin turned into code and became new armor parts for Zero One the faceplate opened up and a blue faceplate with green eye resembling an emperor penguin took its place. Then two shoulder pads resembling penguin wings are attached to the shoulders and finally feet armor resembling flippers. The winds are at his command. Okay I know what to do. Zero One said as he performed a kick. With said kick was causing a windstorm that blew away the mind altering gas away as well as knocking Envoy off her feet and knocking the bat monster out. Ingenium Midnight capture the villains and save the others I'll take care of Envoy. Zero One said as both Midnight and Ingenium nod as Zero One ran off to fight Envoy. It took a few seconds to realize that. Did we take orders by someone that isn't a pro hero? Midnight asked as Ingenium nodded. They both decide that they would ignore that part and just do what Zero One told them to do. With Zero One. Zero One was fighting Lady Envoy as she tried to futilely use her quirk on him. Damn you brat die already will you? Envoy said as she kicks Zero One only for him to block it. I will not as long as I have the power and will to do so I will save the day. Zero One said as he pressed the side of the driver. Storming impact. Zero One rushes towards Envoy with a spinning triple jump to call upon a tornado then performs a downward axe kick. Su. Tu. My. En. Gu. I. En. Pa. Tu. Tu. Storming impact. Striking Envoy to the ground. Envoy gets up hoping to get away from Zero One. Well then Zero One. A man voice said as combat knife stabbed Envoy in the heart. Gah. Envoy screamed as the knife was embedded on her chest. Zero One turned around to see an intimidating, muscular man who walks with a distinct hunch and has a flat, somewhat triangular face with no nose. He removed it himself, and a very long tongue, tainted with numerous small bumps. He has rather long black hair, which he wears in a messy fashion. It would drape over his face if not for his headband and mask, and small blood red eyes with tiny irises. He sports a dark combat suit, plated with metal armor across his body to holster his weapons. The torso is sleeveless, so he instead wraps his arms in yellow bandages, all the way from just below his shoulders to his wrists. He also wears long black wristbands and a watch on his left arm, and his knees are protected with metal pads, the costume completed by black boots with steel armor. He always dons his signature blood red scarf and matching headband, as well as the tattered cloth he wears around his face as a mask. This is the hero killer stain. Envoy's eyes widen as she sees the hero killer but rather than put his eyes on her he sets his gaze on Zero One. Izuku looks at Stain with fear but then notices that the look on Stain's eyes showed regret. Nothing personal Zero One but my boss needs you for something. Stain said as he rushes towards Zero One. Chapter 2. Meeting La Magia of the AQMS. Zero One and Stain were fighting each other. For what reason it was not known but he knew, he need to stop him though one did boggle his mind he thought Stain went after pro heroes not some kid with a power suit. Zero One knew it was a long shot but he needed to ask. Stain why are you doing this, I thought you only went after fake heroes. Zero One asked as he blocked another sword swing. Like I said an associate of mine wants the data of our fight and in exchange he will give me data on some corrupt pro heroes. Stain said as he charged at Izuku once more. Zero One was shocked at the fact that there were corrupt heroes or the fact someone provised him as a threat. But Zero One was curious about one thing. Really I thought it was because I signed a contract with Toei and Namco Bandai. Zero One said as Stain shakes his head. No I'm not fussed about that. In fact the contract is just a written confirmation of their blessing for you to use the title of Cayman Rider. Stain said as he continued his attack. This surprised Zero One also leaving him wide open as Stain slashed him and knocking him down. Damn it all. Stain is stronger than I thought Zero One said as Charlotte appeared with the attaché caliber in hand. Izuku-sama use it. Charlotte said as she tosses the attaché caliber to Zero One. Zero One catches it and opens it. B-L-A-D-R-I-S-E. Yashik use. Zero One shouted as he charged towards Stain. The two blades clash as they continue to fight Charlotte shouted to Zero One. 
Izuku-sama insert a progress key into the attaché caliber. Charlotte shouted. Hi Charlotte. Zero One said as he pressed the button of the rising hopper key. Jump. Zero One then inserts the key into the attaché caliber. Progress key confirmed ready to utilize. Grasshopper's ability. A yellow energy started to emit from the attaché caliber's blade upon being fully charged. Zero One rushes towards Stain and delivers two powerful slashes. A downward slash followed by a horizontal slash. Rising KABA and slash. Ra. I. Zai. And. Gu. Ka. Ba. And. Su. Tu. Ra. Su. Shi. Yu. Rising KABA and slash. Upon the attack connecting to Stain he falls over with Ingenium and Midnight arrive and saw Stain the both gasp but soon get on guard and wanted to attack him until Envoy somehow used her quirk to hurt the two pro heroes Stain saw this and kicked her head to knock her out he then got up and pointed his blade at Zero One. Heck good work Zero One. Stain started to say until he heard a ringing sound. The source of the sound was a smartphone he hit on him. Stain answered the phone. Hello, I see very well. I must say I'm glad to have met you, but now I must take my leave farewell came in Rider Zero One and become the true hero you were meant to be. Stain said with a smile as he said that last part. He ran off as both Midnight and Ingenium started to get up. Hey you two are you alright? Zero One asked the two pro heroes. We're fine little one. Stain did us a favor in stopping Envoy and keeping her alive. Midnight said as she handcuffs Lady Envoy. Though we'll need to call an ambulance for her. Ingenium said as he calls an ambulance. True how's the girl is she safe? Zero One asked worried about the safety of the nice girl. She's fine, shaken but fine as are the others. Ingenium said in a sharp tone angry at himself for not noticing this sooner. Either way we want thank you Cayman Rider 01. Midnight said in a slurry tone. Miss Midnight I need to inform you that Izuku-sama is only 14 years old therefore you cannot flirt with him. Charlotte said in a deadpan tone. Doesn't stop me from teasing him. Midnight countered. Midnight thought as she stored that piece of info away. Dot 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 fair enough Midnight San. Charlotte said. Um I know for a fact that we can't arrest him for vigilantism but we can still give him tickets for speeding, driving without a license and underage driving. Ingenium said as Zero One paled. Oh god damn it Kasan is going to kill me. Zero One said as he knew he'll get an earful from his mother. The two pro heroes laughed at Zero One at the fact he was more afraid of his own mother than the cops. With Stain, Stain walked through a fancy hall about to deliver the data he gathered. The man that spoke with Stain simply asked him to get combat data 01 and in exchange he would give him evidence on corrupt heroes. Lady Envoy was one of such corrupt heroes. Any who he came across a pair double doors they opened to reveal a young man and woman. The man was sitting on a big desk and a young woman was next to him. Stain did you get the data I asked for? The young man said as Stain nods. I did I also had to take a special attack from 01 but I got it. Stain said as he took out a pen drive and handed to the young man. Thank you Stain. The young man said as he nods at the young woman as she walks towards Stain with a briefcase in hand and hands said briefcase to Stain. When Stain opened the case and saw its contents he smiled for a bit then when he got a closer look at the contents he was enraged. Domestic abuse, extortion, multiple accounts of rape, murder, and quirk marriages. What the absolute hell? Stain shouted. Indeed Stain this world became soft after the fight between All Might and All for One. The young man said as Stain nodded. This young man had told Stain about the quirks all for one and one for all and their users with All Might being the eighth user however when he told him what happened between him and Izuku he was livid. How dare that lying hypocrite tried to snuff out the flames of dreams and heroism from this young man if it wasn't for the fact that Izuku had the zero one driver he would find him worthy of the torch of OFA but his boss gave strict orders to not attack All Might until he found a ninth user. As for the quirk marriages the un had made an international law banning quirk marriages deeming them both inhumane and unethical. However there were some who would break this law to get the best quirk combinations. Stain remember my order. The young man said. I know but when the ninth wielder of OFA is known my blades will be stained with all might's blood. Stain with pure conviction. I understand Stain just make sure you remember that. The young man said as Stain nods and leaves. You are bringing big changes. For better or for worse came in Rider 01. The young man said as he looked at an image of 01. A two weeks later. Izuku was bored really bored. He sighs. This is so boring. Izuku said as he looks at the roof of his room. It was times like this he had wished he didn't graduate early for at the very least he'd have something to do. It had been two weeks since the kidnapping of the girl and all should be good right. Wrong Izuku was fined for speeding and not having a driver's license and to top it all off he was grounded for two weeks and was forbidden to use the 01 driver until the UA entrance exam. But all was not lost the girl now named Achako Yuraka and the rest of her family thanked Izuku for saving her. Achako gave Izuku a kiss in the cheek and a slip of paper with some numbers on it as thanks and the parents gave him contact info for their construction company. Izuku thanked them and they went off. Izuku was counting the minutes until his mom told him that the first part of his punishment was over. Minutes passed and Inko comes through the door. Izuku the first part of your punishment is over. Inko said as Izuku hugs her. Inko did remind Izuku that he couldn't use the 01 driver until the UA entrance exam. Okay mom can I go to the arcade? 
Izuku asked as Inko said yes, Mustafu Arcade. Izuku was having a good time in the arcade after two weeks of doing nothing Izuku liked this change. Hoi, Deku, Katsuki shouted as he enters the arcade with Shizuka. Oh hi Kachin, Izuku said as he played his game which was House of the Dead 2. So Auntie Inko finally released you from your prison. Katsuki said with smirk, more like I'm on probation since I can't use my driver until the UA entrance exam. Izuku said as he defeats the Emperor. Damn that sucks, either way me and Brainiac are gonna get some pizza you want. Katsuki asked. Sure. Izuku said as he went with Katsuki and Shizuka. At a pizza place. This is a good place Kachin how come I've never heard of it? Izuku said as he takes a bite of pepperoni pizza. What can I say I have good taste? Katsuki said as he munched on his own slice of ghost pepper pizza. You may abaka bakagu but you do know how to get a good pizza. Shizuka said as she take a bite of her chicken BBQ pizza. Like I said Brainiac I have good taste and when I become a pro hero I'll make this my official pizza spot. Katsuki said as he takes another slice of his spicy pizza. I second that. Izuku said as someone was approaching him. The person was a young man that was taller than Izuku. He had blue hair and purple eyes wearing a black shirt with a red jacket and navy blue jeans. Say are you Kamen Rider 01? The young man said. Um yeah I am why? Izuku said. Awesome can I have an autograph? The young man said. Izuku was stooned as was Bakugu someone was asking for his autograph. SSS sure um mmmmwww what's why 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 your name? Izuku asked as he stuttered. Darwin Lemaja is my name. Darwin said with a smile. Thank you Darwin-san, um what do I sign? Izuku asked. Oh right here use this. Darwin-san said as he gave Izuku a notebook. As Izuku signed the notebook Bakugu was shocked at this. What the fuck? Was all Bakugu could say about this moment. Anywho Mr. Zero One I do have one thing to say. Darwin said. Oh sure. Izuku said. If you do something, do it better, be better than before, and push towards the ever-changing after. Darwin said with a grin. The fuck does that mean? Katsuki said. It means don't do the same thing over and over, you have to do better. Darwin said. Oh I see thank you Darwin-san. Izuku said. No problem man. Also do you think we can have a spar? Darwin said with a smile. A spar with me? Izuku asked getting nervous. Yeah with my quirk versus your suit. Darwin said still smiling. Sorry but my suit is in lockdown until the UA entrance exam. Izuku said as Darwin got sad. Damn that sucks. But oh well by the way everyone will want an autograph. Later. Darwin said with a shrug. Darwin leaves as many people starts to line up to get an autograph from 01. Izuku house. Hours later. Izuku was so tried when he came home. After signing autographs and taking a lot of people, some were bummed out that they couldn't see the armor but they were nice about it. Izuku decides to lay on the couch and watch some TV. This is the HNN bringing all news hero and quirk related. I'm Chet Ubecha and with me is my partner Diane Simmons with this special report Diane. Thank you Chet as of right now a raid had occurred just now in what was suspected to be one of the last Yakuza's bases belonging to the Shai Hasekai faction. Hold on Diane I've received an update on the Shai Hasekai raid it turns out a once defunct branch of the police has been reactivated, the AQMS. What? The anti-quirk military service. Chet those guys. I know Diane but now is not the time for this anywho we go live with our field reporter Kent Brockman who is at the scene, Kent. With Kent Brockman. Chet and Diane I'm here with the new leader of the newly reformed AQMS Nigo Hatsum. Nigo what do plan for the AQMS? Kent said as he points his microphone at Nigo. Nigo Hatsum was a tall man who has pink hair and blue eyes he also has a pink beard and mustache was wearing what looks like a SWAT combat gear with a few exceptions. He has hover boots and two exo cybernetic arms on each arm. Thank you Kent and as for why we were reinstated it was due to how the laws were made making them flawed. Nigo said as Kent raised an eyebrow. The laws, flawed can you explain what you mean by that? Kent asked wondering how the laws are flawed. Well Ken ever since Kamen Rider 01 first appeared and revealed to be quirkless our government had decided to take a deep dive into the law books and let me tell you it was not pretty. Nigo said, I'm now a bit frightened about how messy it is but I have to ask for an example. Kent said, of course one example is of as if Shizuka the girl with three quirks she lost her eyesight during a villain attack and didn't use her quirk to stop the acidic slime from hitting her eyes. Nigo said as Kent paled. I see that there is no self-defense law to allow her to use her quirks in order to save her eyes. Kent said paling at the fact that a young girl had lost her eyes. Another example was ex-pro hero Lady Envoy who used her quirk to open an underage prostitution ring as she was protected by the Retired Heroes Act which allows her use of her quirk even after becoming a civilian. Which was lucky stopped by the efforts of Zero One, Midnight and Ingenium Nigo said as Kent's eyes widened. I see. Kent said as he seethed in anger. Nigo took notice and asked. Do you have a daughter Kent? Nigo asked in a calm tone hoping to calm Kent down. I do and she's 14 years old. Kent said as calms down. Don't worry she's behind bars never to see the light of day again. Nigo said as Kent smiles. Thank you Nigo. Also one last question. What will be the AQMS goal? Kent asked. To help those in need and be the bane of criminals no matter what guys they take. Nigo said with conviction in his voice. Near Dagaba Municipal Beach Park. We see a small girl with bluish, off-white hair, messy and unkempt, which is parted in the middle of her forehead, almost reaching down to her waist. 
She has very wide, innocent-looking eyes, which are bright red in color. Poking out from the right side of her forehead is a small, brown horn. She's wearing a plain, short-sleeved dress, which is a dirty, pale tan color. Bandages are wrapped around both her arms and legs, stopping at her wrists and ankles. On her little hand she was holding some kind of phone that looked like it was cobbled together out of scrap parts and duct tape. A Mark are you sure we're near there? The girl asked. The phone glowed a bit while the girl looked at it. Yes, Harry, we are almost there just a little bit more okay. Hi, Arxen. Harry said. Harry, don't worry, the Yakuza are gone now, you don't need to worry anymore. I know, Arxen, but what if no one wants me? Harry said as a tear fell from her eye. Don't cry, Harry, once you put the tracker on the beach, my master will come for you while I go with my creator. Thank you, Arxen. Harry said as she reaches the beach. Okay, now take the phone and press the red button, then wait, all right, upon my master finds you, drop the phone and go with him, he has green hair. Hi, Arxen. Harry said as she does that. Harry pressed the button as a signal was sent. With Charlotte, Charlotte was using her laptop when her phone notified her of something. She took a look only for her eyes widen. Charlotte thought as she looked at the phone's location. Izuku-sama. Charlotte shouted as she went to get Izuku. With the young man. The young man that spoke with Stain was looking at a map when the signal appeared. Call all units near Dagaba Municipal Beach Park. We found the Ark. I repeat, we found the Ark. The young man said. Near Dagaba Municipal Beach Park. Um, Charlotte, is this where the signal is coming from? Izuku said as he holds her in his arms. Hi Izuku-sama however we have to get this young one home. Charlotte said as Izuku raised an eyebrow. Why not a hospital? Izuku asked. Just by looking at her I can tell she might have either iatrophobia or nosocomophobia. Charlotte said making Izuku's eyes widen. Okay hospital and doctors are a no-go then. Izuku said as he sighs knowing well what those words mean. With no choice the three went home as they did so Izuku notices an empty lot near that had a for sale sign. Am I wonder? Izuku said as he takes a picture of the contact info. Izuku-sama what's wrong? Charlotte asked. Nothing Charlotte. Izuku as the three of them went home. Sometime later in the same location. Sir, we found it. A solder said as he opened the back of a truck. Once the back of the truck is open the solder smiled knowing a big pay raise would come for them. On the inside of the truck there what looks like a core for a very advanced computer. It started to glow blue and red when the soldiers were cheering. Chapter 3. Roaring Muscles and Cutie Daughter. And Ko pinched the bridge of her nose as she sees her laying on the sofa the girl looked content as she slept on Izuku's leg as Izuku pets her hair. Okay I'll bite where did you find her? And Ko asked. In Dagaba Beach Mom. Izuku quietly said. I see and why haven't you taken her to the hospital then? And Ko asked as Izuku looked at Inko with a stern look. Charlotte believes that she might be afraid of hospitals and doctors. Izuku said. And Ko raises an eyebrow. What makes you say that? And Ko asked as Charlotte answered. The bandages on her arm may look dirty but they're professionally made. Charlotte said as she points to the bandages. And Cole looks at the bandages to see that Charlotte is right. Well anyway I'm going to call the police in the morning alright. And Ko said as she goes to bed. Hi Kosen good night. Izuku said. Good night and Ko sama. Charlotte said. Good night you too. And Ko said as she goes to her room. Charlotte and Izuku tried to get Iri to sleep with Charlotte but Iri in her sleep wouldn't let go of Izuku so he volunteered to sleep with Iri. The two went to bed but after a while Iri started tossing and turning. Izuku woke up to see Iri must be having a nightmare. Izuku knew what to do. So he carries Iri to an old music box in a chair. The same chair and music box his mother would take him when he gets fussy. He sits on the chair while carrying Iri as she was fussing. He opened the music box. As the music play and as Iri listens to it she stops fussing and goes to sleep. Izuku knew that he had to stay with her for the whole night. He did not noticing Inko taking a few pictures of him and Iri. But Iri said something that snapped Izuku awake and made Inko drop the phone. Oyasumi Papa, a sleepy Iri said as she snuggles on Izuku's chest. Izuku went wide-eyed but recovers a bit. He breathes for a bit and realizes that he and Charlotte may be the only ones to treat her well. Izuku simply bit the bullet and said, Oyasumi Musum. Izuku said as he goes to sleep as well. And Ko now shrugging off the initial shock both Iri calling Izuku Papa and Izuku calling Iri Musum she goes towards them and wraps them in a blanket. Oyasumi Sachai, Mega Musum. And Ko said as she closes the music box. The two slept soundly that night as this was the first night he slept peacefully. Next day. On the next day the improvised father and daughter woke up and went to the kitchen to get some breakfast. Upon going to the kitchen he sees both his mother and Charlotte along with five other people. Two he recognized as All Might and Nigo Hatsum. He also saw his mother glaring at All Might. When Izuku looked at the other three people all of them are men and all of them are older than Izuku. The first one was a tall, lean but muscular man with sharp and rather elongated features. His shiny hair was always worn smooth down and parted to his left, and was of a dark green color, with three yellow streaks towards the front, two on his right, and one on his left. His eyebrows were also yellow, matching the rims of the triangular glasses he wore and the strikingly bright yellow irises of his stern-looking eyes. His looks gave off a sense of authority, as he rarely smiled, and he always appeared to be glaring. He appeared to be wearing plain office clothes. His clothes, however, seemed to be quite durable, as he used them during battles and they didn't show any sign of damage or tearing. After a few seconds he recognized him as Murai Sasaki Aka Sir Nidai. 
A second person he saw is a tall young man with a very muscular build who possesses a number of noticeable scars around his lower arms. He looks very unique due to his blue oval-shaped eyes, as if they were drawn in a simplistic style with no visible sclear, and nose which is prominently rounder than most others. He has blonde hair, the top part of which is arranged in a cowlick, while the bottom section is worn swept backward. He wears what looks like a UA high school uniform, minus the blazer. He wears a belt with a large, rectangular golden buckle in the shape of a carnivorous mouth. He didn't know who he was but he looked like an anime version of the western pre-quirk comic book character Tintin if he remember correctly. The last one is a tall man with short, black hair and somewhat rectangular black eyes. As a member of the police force, he is normally seen in his uniform, which consists of his signature tan overcoat and matching hat, underneath which he wears a black suit, a green tie at his neck with matching slacks and dress shoes. Any who he spoke. Papa, who are these people? Hiri asked. Mom, what's going on? Izuku asked. Well, I called the police like I said I would last night and originally they were going to send just Commander Hatsum and Detective Tsukachi but these three came along for the ride. And Ko said as she glares daggers at All Might. We here to discuss about the girl. Murai said as he looks at Hiri scaring her. Hiri hides behind Izuku as he glares at Murai. Nigo saw this and went into action. Murai stop it now you're scaring the kid and besides this isn't your case anymore why are you here? Nigo asked. Fine Nigo I'll stop. Murai said. Thou this is why the Commissioner General didn't want you here Murai. Detective Tsukachi said as he pinches the bridge of his nose. Anyway we're here to ask the little one about the bad bird people all right. Nigo said. Izuku and Nko were confused but Iri knew what he was talking about. Iri shakes a bit but Nigo spoke. It's okay little one the bad bird people are gone all right. Nigo said as Iri stopped shaking. Oh, oh okay mister. Iri said. Then Iri started telling them about her time in the shy Hasekai and her quirk but when she got to the park Kai extracting her blood she started to cry and told them she wanted to stay with her papa. Nigo sighs at this but then chuckles. Damn it I lost five grand. Nigo said as Nko wax Nigo with a ladle. No cursing in front of Magamusum. Nko said. Mom where's my driver? Izuku asks as he wants to hit Nigo as well and maybe Ryder kick All Might out of his home. All Might went wide-eyed and calmed down the situation. Okay here's the deal since Uri was involuntary involved with the shy Hasekai she would have been taken to a safe house. But someone from CPS who has a future psych quirk told us that it would be best that she stays here and from the looks of it she feels right at home. Detective Tsukachi said with a smile. Thank you Detective Tsukachi. And Ko said as the two police officers and Murai got up and left leaving All Might and Anime Tintin behind. Um I know this is awkward but I'm Mirio Tagata and I'm a second year of UA it's nice to meet you 01. Mirio said with a big smile as he stretched out his hand. Oh thank you Mirio-san. Izuku said as he shakes said hand. I'm um, Shonen I'd like to talk to you I I mean about something. All Might said. All Might wanted to talk with Izuku privately but one glare from his mother destroyed any idea of that happening. About what All Might? Izuku asked. I was going to train to Gata Shonen in Dagaba Beach and well I thought since you live there that may you could. All Might said before Izuku interrupted him. What will this training consist of? Izuku asked knowing what All Might wanted. Cleaning up the beach to build up muscle of course. All Might said as he was happy that Midoriya Shonen was willing to listen. Only under two conditions. Izuku said. Very well Shonen. All Might said having no reason to refuse. First my mother supervises the training I partake in. Second that you don't remove the trash for about a month. Izuku said. Everyone in the room rose an eyebrow at the second condition. Why Papa? Harry asked tilting her head thus making cuter as Izuku smiled. One month later, I'd like to thank you young man for buying this spoiled land. An old lady said as she shakes Izuku's hand. It's no problem ma'am I still feel I'd underpaid you. Izuku said as the old lady shakes her head. Nonsense young man I feel like you overpaid for these lots. The old lady said. Well can we agree to disagree? Izuku asked. Of course I think the construction company you hired is getting antsy and wants to start. The old lady said as Izuku looked at the Uraraka construction company employees looked like they want to start. For those unaware Izuku had just bought the land in front of Dagaba Beach and hired the Uraraka Construction Company to build the place. This was the reason that he wanted All Might and Miriota not to take out the trash from the beach it was so that he could buy the land at a cheaper price. To say that the Uraraka's were happy and willing to it made Izuku happy, but they asked Izuku if he could let Achako stay with him. When he asked why they said that they had made a similar deal with another building they built but the building changed hands and the new owner said no deal. After hearing that Izuku said of course she can stay. Of course and thank you once more Zero One Shonen. The old lady said. Izuku was surprised that his fame had speared that far. You're welcome, madam. Izuku said. Oh, one more thing. Could I have an autographed photo of you in your armor? The old lady asked. Um, mum. Izuku said as Inko gives Izuku his driver. Make sure to get his good side, okay? Inko said. Of course, with my quirk camera, I'll always get the good side. The old lady said as she prepared her quirk and Izuku puts on the driver. Zero one driver. He then pressed the button, then scanned it and placed it inside the driver. Jump. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E. P-R-O-G-R-I-S-E. To be Iega Rise. Rising Hopper. A jump to the sky turns to a rider kick. Izuku transformed into Zero One. 
Okay, ma'am, I'm ready. Oh, and you guys can start working now. Zero One said as the worker went to work building what Zero One asked for. After posing for a bit and signing the photos for the old lady's grandkids, she waved goodbye and left. It was at that moment All Might and Mirio appeared. Both of them are wearing their hero costumes. Mirio's a white skin tight top with the number 1 million stamped across his chest in a bold, yellow font. The trimming on the top and shoulder pads are made in a matching fashion. On his waist, two green lines act as a belt, along with some lines of similar appearance on his shoulders, which dip in places to form two Vs. Mirio also wears baggy dark blue pants and white knee-high boots. He wears a red cape as well as thick gloves of matching color. Mirio's costume is then topped off with a white visor with yellow lenses. Midori, I see that you made your purchase. All Might said, I did All Might and also hey Mirio, how are you? Izuku said as he waved to which he waved back. Well Midori, it's nice to see you again. Mirio said, hi Mirio Onichin. Here he said as she waved at Mirio. During the month that All Might and Mirio had to wait, Mirio got to know Ari for a bit granted under the watchful eyes of her father but soon realized that he was good with kids and told that he could be Ari's babysitter and soon Mirio became her Onii chan So what's we'll be doing today All Might? Izuku asked. Well I want you and Mirio to spar to see what we need to do for him. All Might said. All Might are you sure about this? And Ko asked worried about Izuku's well-being. I'll be fine Kasan. if something goes wrong you can stop it. Izuku said, and Ko nods as the two heroes to be went to the junkyard, beach. All right shonens let's do this. All Might said as he starts the fight and the two charged at each other. Izuku threw the first punch but Mirio dodged it as threw a punch as managed to hit 0-1. Oh, Izuku shouted as Izuku got back up and charged again and started to throw punches at Mirio but the anime Tintin just dodged them. Mirio then breathed for a bit and then green sparks danced around his body okay let's do this. Mirio said as he got into a stance that 0-1 was familiar with. 5% Detroit Power Smash. Mirio shouted as he threw a powerful straight punch at 0-1 knocking him back. Gah. Izuku shouted as he felt every last bit of that punch. Papa. Iri shouted worried about her father. Izuku thought as he got back up. Buck up Midori I'm done yet but I think you just need one thing. Mirio said. And that is Mirio. 0-1 asked. Mirio struck a pose and shouted. P P P O O W W W E E R R R R. Mirio shot while still doing his pose. Okay, Izuku said confused by this but this gave Mirio an opening to attack. Here I go blinder touch eyeball crush. Mirio said as he tries to poke Zero One's eye out with his quirk permeation. As his finger neared Zero One's eye instead of touching the eye he touches the eye piece of his helmet. Oh what the? Mirio said confused as to why he wasn't touching the eye. This moment of confusion gave Zero One a shot at landing a punch at Mirio's gut. This caused Mirio's permeation to deactivate landing him on the ground. Um what happened Obachan? Here he asked. I can tell you Uri-chan. Charlotte said. Char wanichan tell us tell us. Here he said as she hopped up and down. Okay Uri also all might I'd suggest you listen as well. The armor is made out of 100% pure hexafiber along with other materials that stops most quirk like Mirio's permeation. Charlotte said. Uri had stars on her eyes even though she no idea what hexafiber is all might and Inko on the underhand both paled at this. Mirio and Zero One both overheard this. Whoa hexafiber that explains why my quirk didn't work. Mirio said. Idana Safu I love you and may you rest in peace but 100% pure hexafiber all of the nations of the world will be after with just the basic suit alone. Izuku said. Charlotte Shoujo I know what hexafiber is and I know that it essentially makes wearer immune to quirk base attacks nothing short of a plasma rifle can damage it and it's stain proof. All Might said, not to mention it would take six to seven lifetimes just to pay for one scrap of it. And Ko said, Izuku-sama I believe this key will help you on your apparent lack of power. Charlotte said as she tosses a great progress key that had the picture of a gorilla at 0-1. 1 caught the key and pressed the button. Power. He then scanned the key. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E. Once he scanned it the Z satellite fired a gray beam that turned into a gorilla. The primate roared and beat its chest until 0-1 took out the rising hopper and inserted the key. P-R-O-G-R-I-S-E. G-O-U-W-A-N Gogo. Punching Kong. Once the key was inserted the faceplate opened up and separated while a new black faceplate with yellow eyepieces took their place, the regular chest plate and shoulder pads were replaced by black ones. His hands had what looked like gauntlets and his boots are black as well. Enough power to annihilate a mountain. Okay Mirio let's do this. Izuku said as he got into a fighting stance. Mirio charged at 0-1 but 0-1 counterattacked with a big punch. Off darn you sorry for the pun but you pack a mean punch. Mirio said as he stands up and the lighting starts to dance around him again. 0-1 saw this and pressed the key. Okay then here I go 15% Detroit power smash. Mirio shouted as he charged at 0-1. Punching impact. Pa. End. Kai. End. Ku. I. End. Pa. Ku. Two. Rider punch. 0-1 shouted as he charged in as well. At the apex of their charge the two fists collided. Punching impact. Upon the both heroes are flown back to two junk piles. Mirio Shonen. All Might shouted as he went to Mirio. Shachai, Papa, Izuku-sama. The girl shouted as they went to Izuku who had changed back. Hoi Mirio. Izuku said. Yeah Izuku. Mirio asked. Draw. Izuku asked. Draw. Mirio as he laid down. 
Okay, Kasen, can we have Katsudan? Izuku tiredly asked. Of course, Izuku. And Ko said as Charlotte carries Izuku fireman style. I believe training will wait until next week. All Might said. Fine, but just give him some exercises and make him pick up some junk, okay? And Ko said as All Might nods. The Midoriya's leave as All Might think about the sparing match that just happened. He knew that the Zero One armor is strong, but he never expected Hexafiber. But either way, the power punching Kong had was astounding. All Might sighs he needs to get Mirio up to stuff before UA opens its doors and... Crap, I forgot to tell them about the dorms that UA is getting. All Might said as he ran towards the Midoriya's to tell them about it. Later that night, in an alleyway. Damn it, why did she do that? A young man sadly said as he walks around the alleyway when he hears a voice. I can help get back at the bitch. The voice said, Who are you? A young man shouted, I'm just here to help you. The voice said as he holds out three things a belt, what looks like a progress key and a bottle filled with a silver liquid. The young man looks at the items and then the cheating bitch that was his ex-girlfriend. What's the catch? The young man asks, Fight zero one. The voice said still holding out the items. I'll do it. The young man said as he takes the items. The voice thought as he disappeared. Chapter 4 Double Date In Vulcan's Rise It had taken four months but it was done the new home for the Midoriya family is done. The lots that Izuku bought were filled with three building. The building on the left and right sides of the big lot were a pair of two-story buildings and in between them was a big four-story house. The house had five bedrooms, four bathrooms, an attic and a basement. Charlotte claimed the basement. Izuku was given the master bedroom for him and Iriwal and Ko took one of the smaller rooms for herself. Izuku was planning on letting his mother rent out the apartment buildings to students with the buildings being segregated boys on the right and girls on the left. Once the building was done he called Achako to let her know that the apartment she will stay at and his mother had rented out several apartments. With Achako, oh wow this looks good I hope Izuku is here. Achako said as she blushed a little. So who's Izuku? Mina asked with a Cheshire grin. Um he's a friend and the owner of the apartments. Achako said with a blush. And your saver and Cayman Rider 01. Mina said still using that same grin. Mina stopped teasing especially with what nearly happened to her. Ijiro said with a small frown. Mina thinks for a second till she remembers why. Mina now felt bad. Oh right sorry about that. Mina said as Achako waved it off. It's okay Mina right. Achako said as Mina said. Right then I'm Mina Ashido it's nice to meet you Achako. Mina said. Well then I'm Ijiro Kirishima it's nice to meet you Achako-san. Ijiro said. Then I'm Achako Yuraka. Achako said as she shakes Ijiro hand. Oi Denki right be careful with those CDs all right some of them are two centuries old. A small young woman said. I got it Kayoka don't worry about. Denki said as he carries a bunch of boxes. Just don't mess it up got it. Kayoka said with a huff. Denki has relatively short blonde hair, parted to the right with a black lightning shaped streak on the left of his side fringe, which is angled so that it partially obscures his left eye. He has slanted, somewhat triangular yellow eyes, and notably small eyebrows. He's a little skinnier than most of the other male students in his class, not having much visible muscle mass. He was wearing a black t-shirt, some jeans and some shoes. Kayoka is a petite, fair-skinned girl with a slender build. She has triangular, lazy-looking onyx eyes with notably long lower eyelashes and rather small eyebrows. Her hair is short, only around chin length, and is dark purple in color with an asymmetrical fringe, and two reflections shaped like sound waves on either side of her head. Her most prominent features are the flexible, plug-like earphone jacks hanging from each of her earlobes at the end of two thin cords, which act like extra limbs. She seems to be able to control these at will, and they are very flexible, able to change length if so desired. She's wearing a shirt that said the end of villains with a skirt some stockings. She also had some boots and spiked bracelets on her arms. Hey there need help? Achako asked. Sure but I don't think you'll be able with all of this. Kayoka said as jabs her thumbs at the boxes. Achako smiles as she touches the boxes making them weightless. This left both slack-jawed. But Denki found his voice. Well I'm guessing that's your quirk. Oh I'm Denki Kaminari by the way. Denki said as introduced himself. Kayoka Gyro it's nice to meet you dot 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 say aren't you the girl that got kidnapped. Kayoka asked as Achako nods. Oh man I hope that bitch rots in jail. Denki said. Last I heard Lady Envoy vanished for a few days and came back beaten black and blue along with Black Dahlia with evidence of her plans to make a criminal empire via I kid you not blood sucking rapist zombies. A bunch of floating clothes said. Oh Toro I see you're seeing your new roommates and talking about the latest gossip. A guy with a tail said. Oh my sure how you know I can't resist gossip since it was about villains getting what they deserve. Toro said. Toro is a fairly short girl with a completely invisible body. She is only identifiable through held or worn objects, like pieces of clothing and accessories, and when clothed, her body appears to be slender yet fairly curvaceous. She was wearing a sleeveless light blue shirt with pink stripes, white shorts, long socks, and gray shoes. Meshura is a young man of muscular build and his short blonde hair swept to the front of his head. He has thin eyes with no lower eyelashes and a thick, long tail with a hairy tip. He wears a white shirt and some pants with pale gray sneakers. Oh well hello everyone I'm Meshura Ajiro and this is Toru Hagakura. Meshura said. Hi guys nice to meet you. Toru said. I'm glad to meet you now let's get this stuff to your apartment Jiro-san. 
Achako said as both she and Kayoka got to her apartment. A few hours later, it had been a few hours since Achako met her roommates. After helping Kayoka, she met five other roommates. Itsuka Kendo, Kanoko Komori, Ibarra Shuzaki, Jirota Shishida, and Tetsu 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 Tetsu. Itsuka has teal eyes and long, ginger hair that she typically wears tied into a high ponytail on the left side of her head. Her bangs are split into three clumps around her eyes, and some of her hair sticks up in large tufts on the top of her head. She was wearing a blue blouse with a large belt, a brown leather jacket, and a pair of light green shoes. Kinoko is a short girl of a rather thin build, with honey brown hair, curved inwards in a mushroom-shaped bob that reaches just below her narrow shoulders. She has a long fringe that completely covers her eyes, hiding most of her face, and her mouth is notably large. Unobscured, her eyes are wide and rather cat-like, tilted inwards with rather long lower eyelashes, and her irises are a warm brown color, her pupils little black crosses, both together highly resembling the caps of cross-sliced shiitake mushrooms. She was dressed in a turtleneck dress with long sleeves and furred cuffs and pale pink knee-high boots with thick tan soles. Ibarra is a girl of medium height with green, thorn-covered vines for hair, one set wrapped around her forehead a couple of times. Because of her quirk, she can grow them at will but she likes to keep her vines at a reasonably manageable length, just above her waist. Her eyes are squinted in dark green with long lower eyelashes. She was dressed in a large dress and had a shawl and a pair of knee-high boots. Jiroda is a tall young man with a very beastly appearance because of his shaggy, brown chin-length hair, beard, and fur covering most of his body. He has sharp teeth and his large jaw sticks out a fair amount, with two of his lower canines poking upwards from between his lips. He also wears small rectangular glasses with thick lenses. He was wearing a long-sleeved button-up shirt, a vest, some pants, and a pair of loafers. Tetsu Tetsu is a young man with quite long, messy gray hair which is rather peculiar in that it never seems to change shape, and black eyes which are tilted dramatically inwards, each lined with a very thick, jagged, tan-colored substance, which are presumably his eyelashes. He doesn't appear to have any notable eyebrows, and, like Ijiro Kirishima, he has rows of sharp, pointed fangs as teeth. He wore a t-shirt, some just training pants, and a pair of shoes. They were all eating dinner made by Inko. I thank you for this wonderful meal Ms. Midoriya, Jirota said. Oh don't worry Shishida-san. Inko said, this is so good Midoriya-san. Itsuka said as she is loving the katsudan Inko made. Kendu-san I don't think my katsudan is that great. Inko said as Tetsu Tetsu made a gesture to Charlotte to cover Iri's ears. Pardon my language Miss Midoriya but this is fucking awesome. Tetsu Tetsu said as Ibarra's vine slapped the back of his head. Please do not utter such language in front of the child. Ibarra said with a frown. I don't worry I gestured the cat lady over there to cover the kid's ears. Tetsu Tetsu said as Charlotte nods her head to confirm that it was so. Very well Tetsu Tetsu Sam. Ibarra said as she ate her dinner. So I was wondering where Izuku got his driver. Kinoko said. Well I suppose I'll need to practice telling my origin story so yeah I'll tell you after dinner. Izuku said as Kinoko nods. After dinner was done Izuku told them about his origin story and how he met All Might, how he broke his dreams and how he received the Zero One driver from his late great-grandfather in his battle against. Everyone gave their condolences about the loss of his great-grandfather and both Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu both proclaimed that All Might was unmanly. Midoriya said I believe that you deserve that driver your great-grandfather gave you this power to be the hero you were meant to be. Ibarra said as she held his hands. Um Papa why is there a light around her? Here he asked as pointed at the light that was around Ibarra. So what key cards you used? Mina asked Izuku. Um I used three if I recall, Rising Hopper, Storming Penguin and Punching Kong. Izuku said as he thought about what keys he used. A grasshopper, a penguin and a gorilla sounds cool I guess. Kayoka said. You got any electric key cards? Denki asked curious if he had any. I do, you guys want to see it. Izuku asked. I'm sure but where can we use them? Denki said. I believe the basement is a good place to test it. Charlotte said appearing out of nowhere. This spooked everyone but after a bit they went to the basement. Two hours later. That was awesome. Denki shouted as he was the first to leave the basement. Got to admit that was a bit fun. Mina said, I still cannot believe you chose the villainous progress key. Ibarra said as she shakes her head. Oh come on it was the closest to my quirk. Mina said as she pouted. I digress but still my choice still left me cold. Ibarra said as she warmed her arms. I like the kangaroo. Iri said as Toru nodded. Say Izuku can I talk to you for a minute? Achako asked. Sure you're Rakasan. Izuku said as the girls dragged the boys away from them. Um I was wondering if you like to get some machai on Seri. Achako asked with a blush. Um so sure you're Rakasan. Izuku said with a blush of his own. So say then. Achako said as Izuku nodded. Izuku went to bed while blushing and Achako went to the girl's apartment and she squealed and the other girls came to see her and Achako told them what happened. They squealed until a pissed off Kayoka Gyro shouted. Shut the fuck up you bitches I have in haste hearing. Kayoka shouted as she went back to bed. That was their quite to go to bed while Achako dreamed of seas of fluffy green hair and machai. AQMS base. Nigo was at the base showing the rookies the installations of the AQMS base and telling them the benefits of joining AQMS. Nigo was smiling at this but that was until he smelled smoke. 
Oh god damn it May, Vivas. May is about to blow get the rookies to the armory. Nigo shouted as a young man with short black hair and dark honey eyes wearing an AQMS uniform leads the new rookies to the armory. And just in time because a large explosion had just happened. God damn it May, Nigo said as he went to the source of the explosion. May Hatsum is a reasonably short girl with quite a mature build. She has salmon pink hair, which is generally shoulder length, although it does vary, which is styled into thick dreadlocks and side swept to her right. Her eyes are wide and sloped upwards with some notably long upper eyelashes. Their iris is yellow with a cross in the center, making them look somewhat like scope lenses. She is wearing a plain black tank top with workshop coveralls tied casually around her waist and has red and gold steampunk goggles. Oh man I wonder what went wrong with this baby. May asked herself, maybe you're not eating or sleeping again. Nigo said with his arms crossed. Oh hey dad, May said with a smile. May were you inventing again? Nigo asked seeing the destroyed workshop. Oh a new gun for you. May said as if it was a normal thing. I see any luck. Nigo asked. Up till now nope but I won't give up. May said with a large smile. Nigo smiled as it reminded him of his wife May's mother she was a wonderful woman but her life was taken by hellfire. Nigo frowned and started to get angry and at that and May noticed. Daddy stop mama wouldn't want that. May shouted making Nigo snap out of it. Sorry Mayday I didn't mean to do that. Nigo said as May hugged him. Like I said mama wouldn't want that. May said with small tears coming out. Don't worry Mayday I won't let consume me but one day I will arrest that demon. Nigo said as he sees what looks like a toy gun. May noticed what her dad was looking at. You want that? May asked while Nigo nodded. Sure it's based off the gun that Zero One Assistant used. May said as she picked it up. Can you make it blue? Nigo asked as May nods. After a bit Nigo leaves May to continue make babies while goes to check on the rookies and the officer he had assigned to them. He wonders if he can arrest the demon and getting more people for the AQMS and he needs to prove to the government that they are needed them and it was thanks to Zero One they were reactivated. No one knew at the time but the next day would be the AQMS's trial of fire. Sorry, Midori Apartments. Izuku was nervous scratched that he was nearing a panic attack no one especially girls gave him the time of day and now he was on a date with one granted yes they're just going to get Machai. But still. He was dressed in black t-shirt that said, t-shirt, some blue shorts and his red sneakers he also had a backpack with his driver inside when he asked his mother why she said she had a feeling that he'll need it. Hey Izuku you here? Achako said as she came up to Izuku. Oh Achako I'm glad to see you. Izuku said with a blush on his face. Um yeah by the way am I late? Achako asked with a small blush on her own. No I just got here myself. Izuku said as Achako chuckled. Well then a friend of mine found a nice pizza place we could go there for lunch and then go get machai. Izuku said. Um is that place any good? Achako asked. If it impressed my friend and me it'll impress you too. Izuku said as they went to the pizza place. At the pizza place. It took them a while but they found the pizza place that both of them ordered a large meat lover's pizza. Once Achako took one bite she fell in love with this place. MMMMM this is SS so good. Achako said as she ate her pizza. I know right also sorry about what happened earlier. Izuku said as he rubbed the back of his head. What happened earlier was that everyone wanted Izuku's autograph again and the manager of the pizza place loved the idea of a hero here at his store so he asked Izuku if he could bring more customers to his store. Izuku happy agreed with this but he told him to bring this up to both his mother and Toei. It's alright now how about we finish up and get the machai and then go to the arcade. Achako said as they asked for the bill to which Izuku paid for. 20 minutes later, Izuku and Achako were now at a nice cafe where Machai was being sold at a low price. Both Izuku and Achako are now seated when someone familiar to Izuku or rather someone who was familiar to Zero One. Oh Zero One San is that you? Suyu said as she found Izuku and Achako. Oh, you're the girl with the frog quirk. I'm sorry but I haven't gotten your name. I'm Izuku Midori it's nice to meet you. Izuku said. I'm Achako Yuraka it's nice to meet you too. Achako said in a sickly sweet voice. Suyu saw a menacing look on Achako's face but she ignored it. I'm Suyu Asui it's nice to meet you too. Suyu said. Well since you're here I'll go get some more machai if you want. Izuku said as he went to get more machai. Why are you here? Achako asked annoyed that her time with Izuku was interrupted. Um were you on a date or something? Suyu asked in her blunt tone. Um maybe. Achako said with a blush. Sorry I just wanted to thank him for saving me and my sister. Suyu said. Achako thought. It's okay Suyu I didn't know about that. Achako said, really, that was the day of Zero One's debut. Suyu said as Achako's eyes went wide. Wait I missed Zero One debut in an Ananuo. Achako said as she placed her head on the table. Maybe I should just go. Suyu said before Achako stopped her. No it's okay Suyu said I'll try to get another date with him that and Izuku offered you machai. Achako said as Suyu shrugged she's not one to reject free food. As Izuku came back with the machai and drinks a commotion was happening on the other side of the building. The commotion that was happening was caused by four people. Pony please stop you're embarrassing me. A young man with goat horns said. Yeah what he said. The girl with dog ears said. Pony is a short girl with a round face and a short equine muzzle, her face framed by thick, wavy blonde hair which reaches halfway down her back, some shorter bangs hanging down her forehead. 
Her eyes are large and round, Prussian blue in color, and she has a pair of tall, lyre-shaped pale tan horns on her head. Her calves are notably rounded, shaped similarly to those of a horse, and she has brown hooves for feet, a short horse tail poking out from the end of her tailbone. Marcus I told you she's a damn cheat and a goddamn whore and I have proof goddamn it. Pony said as she showed Marcus the proof she had which consisted of pictures of said girl as she was with dating other boys and even older men. Not only to me but to others how low can you go? The boy with Pony asked. Oh please you two are a means to an end I never liked any of you. The bitch with a dog ears quirk said. Marcus got far away from the girl and Pony consoled him while the other guy was pissed off. You stupid bitch how dare you not only do this to me but to others as well. The boy said as he took out a sliver belt. Oh please what are you going to do about it? The bitch said in a condescending tone. This you bitch. The young man yelled as he puts on the belt. Z-E-T-S-U-M-E-R-I-S-E-R. -E -E the young man presses the button on the progress key. Bada. He then inserts the key into the riser. Z-E-T-S-U-M-E-R-I-S-E. -E -E. Once the phrase was said two small red tubes pierced the key and soon more red tubes pierced the young man's skin and injected him with something metallic. For a second's nothing until one person shouted. Oh shit it's a cajun. Darwin shouted which by the way it was the person who shouted. After that statement everyone panicked. Izuku saw the people running away from the kaijin but his only thought were towards Achako and Tsuyu. He found them under a table when all of this was happening. Achako Tsuyu are you alright? Izuku asked as both girls nodded. Okay I think I can fight this guy. Izuku started to say until Achako interrupted him. Fight him. How? Achako said worried about what Izuku was about to do. I have to agree with your Raka-chan even with the device you have it will be hard for you to beat him. Tsuyu said as Achako nodded. Hopefully some heroes come to help. Izuku said hoping that some pro heroes would come. Everyone look at Dragon Hero, Rukyu and Nejire chan A random civilian said as the two pro heroes the civilian mentioned appeared. Rukyu is a woman with chin-length blonde hair, which she wears swept back with a headband, a long fringe over the right side of her face, covering her eye. She has thin, yellow, inward-tilting eyes with slit pupils and notably sharp teeth, these aspects purposefully reptilian as a reference to her quirk. Her hero costume consists of a dark red, traditional kipau with a pale green scale trim around her shoulders, which seems to only be slit on the left side, and knee-high boots, a strap around her exposed thigh. She wears a matching green headband with four large, pale purple claws attached, covering the right side of her face, and a set of small dragon wings protrude from the back of her head, with a number of gold-spiked cartilage piercings decorating her left ear. Nejire is a fair-skinned girl of average height with wide, curious eyes. Her upper eyelash is long and thick, and her irises are a royal blue where her pupils are white. Her hair is periwinkle, and it reaches all the way down to her knees, twisting around itself at her waist and curving inwards around her legs. She has side-swept bangs, tucked behind her ears on the right and hanging just over her eyes on the left, and two short clumps of hair on either side of her face, curved towards her face on the right and behind it, under her ear, on the left. Her hero costume consists of a royal blue skin-tight bodysuit with a high black collar, pale mint green markings covering her torso from over her shoulders to between her legs, framed with turquoise, a matching stripe of the same two colors around both of her upper arms. On her feet, she wears a pair of knee-high boots, a thinning flap buttoned on each thigh, with turquoise spirals around her ankles, matching the thicker ones above her yellow gauntlets and wrist guards. She has a black strap around the top of each thigh, two small satchels attached, and two spiraling horns of hair protruding from behind her ears that are shaped as a reference to her quirk. Don't worry everyone we're here to save the day. Rukyu said. That's right cuties Nejire Chan is here. Nejire said. Thank god for those two. Civilian 1 said. Yeah he doesn't stand a chance. Civilian 2 said. Damn they're so hot. A perverted civilian said. Bash the perv and protect Nejire Chan innocence. Also yeah Rukyu is hot. Civilian 3 said as he and the other two civilians beat up the pervert. Let's go Ryu-chan. Nejire said as she flies towards the kaijin. Yeah but before anybody want to name this something else because calling it kaijin all the time would be boring. Rukyu said, I got one, let call him Maja but more specifically the Bata Maja. Darwin said with a grin, I like it. Rukyu said as she uses her quirk. Upon activating her quirk, her body transforms into that of a large, winged dragon with pale gray scales, although she still has the same skin tone, hair and eyes. Her hero costume remains visible bar her boots and the claws that were on her face has transferred to her right hand. You're going down bug boy, Rukyu said as she charged at the Bata Maja. Okay hopper boy let's go green wave. Nejire shouted as she blasted the Bata Maja with a massive wave. Hey take this lightning blast. Rukyu shouted as she fired a beam of lightning out of her mouth. The Bata Maja took the attack and an explosion occurred thinking they beaten the Maja they let their guard down. Until, Z-E-S-U-M-E-T-S-U -E -E Nova. The Bata Maja fired a blast from his feet knocking both Rukyu and Nejire Chan out of the sky. Ryukayu fell first but Nejire Chan was still fall and was about to hit a building that would have hurt majorly. If it wasn't for the fact that she was being held by Zero One. Are you okay? Zero One asked. Moments after the attacks connected. Oh wow the ultimate attacks of Rukyu and Nejire Chan. Izuku said happy to see this. Only for that good feeling to go away when he saw the Bata Maja was still standing. 
Oh no, it's still up. Achako said worried as she saw the magic tank those hits. God damn it. Suya said as she was worried as well. Z-E-S-U-M-E-T-S Unova. When that had happened Izuku saw what had happened and knew he had to do something as he saw Nejair Chan losing control of her flight he puts on the Zero One driver. Izuku knew he was going to something stupid but before he had a chance to do so Tsuyu spoke. If you're going to do something stupid then at the very least don't go as the grasshopper. Tsuyu said as she takes away the rising hopper progress key from him. What but rising hopper is the only that can reach her. Izuku shouted not noticing that Achako was looking through his bag until she found what she was looking for. Why jump when you can fly? Achako said as she tossed him a pink progress key with a bird on it. Izuku nodded at Achako as he pressed the button and then scanned it. Wing. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E. Once scanned the Z satellite fired its beam only for it to split into two beams turning them in a grasshopper and a falcon and runs towards Nejair Chan as was about to hit the building Izuku inserted the card into the driver. P-R-O-G-R-I-S-E. Fly to the sky. Flying falcon. Both the grasshopper and falcon both become code the yellow armor pieces are few and located on the shoulders and lower part of the chest while the rest of the armor parts are located on each leg. The upper torso, the front of the shoulders and the face which has green tinted visors while the rest of the armor is colored pink. Spread your wings and prepare for a force. Once Izuku transformed he flew towards Nejair Chan and saved her. Are you okay? Zero One asked. No. Nejair looked at Zero One and blushed a bit only to shake her head. Thank you Zero One Sam. Nejair said as Zero One flew down to the ground and placed her on her feet. Don't worry I'm just doing what I can and what I can do is help you and Rukyu. Zero One said. Good cause I think the bad Amaja is about to fight again. Nejair Chan said. Not on my watch. Zero One said as he charged at the Magia and pressed the side of the driver. Flying impact. Who? Ra. I. And. Gu. I. And. Pa. Ku. Two. Zero One flies into the air with his wings and somersaults before performing a rider kick covered in pink energy. A pink energy talon surrounds his right foot just before he strikes the target. S-E-I-Y-A. Zero One yelled as his kick made the magic stagger. Flying impact. With the police. So what the situation here Naomasa san An officer asked. It's Detective Tsukachi went on duty and as for what we know a 6 no an angry boyfriend found out his girlfriend had cheated on him and according to evidence a civilian gave us this wasn't the first time she had done this. Naimasa said, Well damn I kinda feel bad for him but he is wrecking the place and the fact that he's not using his quirk makes this harder for us. The officer said, True from what the civilians told us it was a simplified version of Zero One's device key card and all. Naimasa said as another officer came by, Sir Zero One has been spotted and saved Nejair Chan, oh and the AQMS are on their way here. Officer 2 said, They're coming here why? Officer 1 asked, Orders came from up high there are backup. Officer 2 said as he sees several vehicles arriving. Those vehicles a lot like 2 at 47 Kodiak drive up as shuttles, 4 M35 Makos and 3 M44 Hammerhead from the Mass Effect trilogy. Um guys am I seeing things? Officer 1 asked, No you're not seeing things I'm seeing this as well. Officer 2 said as Nigo gets out of one of the Makos. Alright everyone what the situation? Nigo asked as the other officers and Naomasa got serious. Right a young man with an odd device attacked his cheating ex however many were endangered and he also attacked two pro heroes. Naomasa said as Nigo nods. Yeah it turns out the chick is wanted for fraud and grand larceny. Officer 1 said. Luckily for us we managed to find her and cuff her. Officer 2 said as said girl was in cuffs. I see well then we might as well help the heroes and zero one out. Nigo said as he goes back into the Mako. How will you get in there? Naomasa asked as the Mako started to fly. Um like that. Officers 1 and 2 said at the same time. Shut up you two. Naomasa said as the civilians takes pictures of the AQMS's vehicles. With Zero One and the pro heroes. Zero One, Rukyu, and Nejair Chan are still fighting the Bata Magia and it even took a rider kick and it wasn't beaten. Damn it some backup would be nice. Rukyu said who was out of her dragon form. Yeah I don't know how much longer I can fight. Nejair Chan said as she sounded exhausted. This is bad we need help. Zero One said wishing for some help right now. Don't worry folks the cavalry has arrived. Nigo said as he and the rest of the AQMS forces arrive. Well where the hell did you? Ryukyu started to say until Nigo interrupted her. Never mind that Ryukyu we need to stop this guy. Nigo said as he calls out his forces. Once Nigo gave the order AQMS forces come out of the Makos and Kodiaks all of them armed with plasma rifles and equipped in armor. Once they were out all of them aimed at the Bata Magia. Damn but no matter I still have to fight Zero One any the seas guys will take you down. The Bata Magia said as he throws the bottle to the ground. Once the bottle hits the ground the sliver liquid began to spread and began to rise up and turned into robots their armor resembled trilobites. After this battle people would call them trilobite magis. Oh hell. One AQMS officer said. Okay guys open fire at the bastards. Nigo said as the AQMS officers fire at the magis. The magi were taking the hits and the magis began to fire of their machine guns. Zero One and Ryukyu charged at the magis. The bata magi attacks Zero One and Nigo backs him up. The Hammerheads and the Makos are firing their cannon while heavy weapons teams were attacking the Magus. Bit by bit and little by little they were taking down the Magus. Damn it all. 
The Batamaja said, Okay, I'll need to use the AP shot card. Nigo said has held up a card. Maybe I should use this one. Zero One said as he holds a blue key with the picture with a wolf. Take this you dumbasses. The Batamaja said as he pressed the side of the riser. Z-S-U-M-E-T-S-U Nova. He fired an energy beam at Zero One and Nigo. Zero One saw this and got Nigo out of there causing both of them dropping their cards. Oof damn that was close thanks Zero One. Nigo said as he accidentally picking up the blue key. Okay Officer San. Zero One said as he picked up Nigo's card. The Batamaja thought. Okay let do this. Zero One said as he scanned the card. Error. Oh what the heck. Zero One said as he sees that this was Nigo's card. With Nigo. Okay let's do this. Nigo said as he tries to open the only to fail. He then tries again and again he struggles to open the damn button and he opens it and pushes the button. Bullet. Nigo then puts the card in the gun he then pulls the trigger but nothing happens. What happened here? Nigo asked himself until it started to glow for a few seconds until it stopped and said. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E. Cayman Rider. It was then when Nigo noticed that it, the key that was in the gun was not his but he didn't care the phrase Cayman Rider was on repeat but after a moment he has a feeling to pull the trigger and shout one word. H-E-N-S-H-I-N. Nigo yelled as he pulls the trigger. S-H-O-T-R-I-S-E. Nigo fires the gun and the bullet hits the Batamaja but the bullet came back to Nigo only for him to backhand the bullet. Shooting Wolf. Once he hit the bullet it broke apart and became a sliver bodysuit with blue and white armor with the helmet resembled a wolf he also had a white belt. The elevation increases as the bullet is fired. What the hell? Nigo said as he looked at himself. Chief did you became a Cayman Rider? An AQMS officer named Vivas asked. I I think so. Nigo said. Say I think can I call you Cayman Rider Vulcan? Vivas asked. HMMMM dot 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 sure it actually sound good. Vulcan said as he rises the pistol at the Batamaja. God damn it all, just die already. The Batamaja said as he charged. Vulcan fired a few shots from his gun which caused the Batamaja to stagger. Whoa this is great. Hey I some heavy firepower get some of the rail cannons over here now. Vulcan ordered. A few AQMS officers came with large rail cannons and proceeded to fire at the Maja. Okay now huh. Vulcan started to say until somehow the armor started to tell on what to do. He pressed the button of the key. Bullet. He then pulled the trigger. Shooting blast. Sh. U. T. I. N. U. Boo. Ra. Su. Two. Vulcan fires four blue energy constructs of wolf heads from the gun that attached to the bat of Madge's limbs and crash it into a nearby surface, followed by the energy heads transforming into energy pins and securing the Maja in place. Vulcan then charges the gun once more and fires a ball of blue energy that can melt through anything in its path, though oddly enough not including the Maja. Shooting blast. The Magia exploded but the boy was mostly unharmed he still had the belt but the pseudo progress key was a little bit away from the boy. Um you did good boy your ex is going to jail so yeah. A cloaked male said as he takes the bat as it sumerized key. He disappeared after he gets the key. Well shit I'm glad that's over. Viva said. Yeah dot 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 also how do I take this armor off? Vulcan asked. No idea sir. Viva said as he shrugged. Zero one just looked at Vulcan and wonders. What the hell just happened? Zero one yelled. Achako and Suyu just looks at the chaos with awe and then Suyu looked at Achako. You know I don't mind sharing since I'm bi. Suyu said bluntly. Achako gave Suyu a flat yet embarrassed look on her face. Chapter 5. Entrance Exam Woes. Police Station. Detective Tsukachi was annoyed right now. First Izuku Midoriya becomes 0-1. Second he can't arrest him due to the fact he is quirkless and now a bootleg driver appeared along with a bootleg key. This is giving him a headache but he needed Midoriya's testimony. Midoriya said I really didn't expect to see again. Tsukachi said annoyed. Yeah I know my date was ruined because of it. Izuku said making Tsukachi wince. Damn that must suck badly sorry about that. Tsukachi said. I know and Achako looked very annoyed at that. Izuku said. Tsukachi recognized that name from the Lady Envoy incident and he got a date with her. He shakes his head and got back to work. Izuku said I need to know about what happened today. Tsukachi asked. Of course sir. Izuku said as he told him what happened today. Tsukachi nods it was more or less the same story he heard from several witnesses. Say Tsukachi said what happened to the Kaijin. Izuku asked. Well for one thing we are now referring them as Maja and second he's at the hospital recovering he'll have a light sentence since he gave us info about the device he gave us however the bootleg progress key is missing. Tsukachi said as Izuku nods. Izuku thinks for a bit but sighs. Why do I get the feeling that I'll be facing more of these Maja whether I want to or not? Izuku said as he sigh. Tsukachi sweat drops at this and he can't help but shake the feeling that he isn't wrong. Well your story checks out and we can't arrest you for vigilantism due to our laws being badly written so you're free to go. Tsukachi said as Izuku leaves. Outside of police station. Izuku is now outside of the police station where Achako, Tsuyu and Nigo were waiting for him. Oh Midoriya sen glad to see you here. Nigo said. Oh Nigo sen you okay and how did you get out of your suit? Izuku asked. I'm good and it was pretty easy after I activated my guns release button. Which reminds me catch. Nigo said as he threw the shooting wolf key at Izuku. Hey you sure I mean I know it's my key but I thought. Izuku said before Nigo interrupted him. Yes as you said it's your key it's not mine to keep unless you're willing to sail it. Nigo asked with a grin. 
Really? Suyu said in a flat tone. Can't hurt to ask. Nigo said with a shrug. Izuku saw a dust cloud running towards them when the cloud stopped it revealed to be Charlotte, Inko and Iri. Izuku-sama we are here. Charlotte said. Papa are dates always like this? Iri asked cutely. Oh my baby I'm glad you're safe. Inko said as she cried waterfalls as she hugs Izuku. Grandma you're crying too much again. Iri said with a pout. Thank you Charlotte. No Iri dates aren't always like and am I in trouble. Izuku said as he answered the women dot 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 well two women and one cute little girl. No you're not I'm just glad you're safe Izuku. Inko said as she sighs knowing that she'll have to get used to this. As Inko and Izuku spoke Charlotte went towards Nigo. Nigo said I believe you will need that key along with these. Charlotte said as she pulls out a briefcase and opens it to reveal several progress keys. The Z satellite can create several keys as well as make copies of said keys in fact you may keep that key along with the others. Charlotte said. Oh that's great Charlotte Chan. Izuku said. Of course Izuku-sama also one more thing Nigo-san. Charlotte said as she pulled out a stack of papers. Um what's that? Nigo asked. A contract with Toei and Namco Bandai you need to sign it in order to use to officially become Kamen Rider Vulcan. Charlotte said as Nigo sweat dripped at that but signed them anyway. Damn it Vivas this is your fault. Nigo mumbled. Okay everyone let's get Achako and go back home. Izuku said as Achako nods. Can I come? Tsuyu asked as Izuku nods. Sure but could you notify your parents first, please? Izuku said as Tsuyu nods. After saying goodbye to Nigo and calling a taxi they went back to the apartments and home to get some rest. But the wake of the first Magia attack had left the heroes wondering if they can take it. Unknown location. So the bad Magia has failed. A young man's voice said. Yeah zero one and that Vulcan guy kicked its ass. Another young man said. At least with the data we've obtained we'll go into making stronger Magia. The first young man said. Hey what about AFO? The second young man asked. He's but a relic of the past and the fool of all might believes him to be dead when it's clearly not the case. The first young man said as he shakes his head. Em yeah by the way some warp guy came and told us about some sort of league I refused his offer but told him that I'm willing to sail Zesumerizers and Zesumerize keys at a low cost. The second young man said with a grin. Good the sales are going well and speaking of which I have just sold a key and riser to a young man about to take the UA entrance exam. The first young man said. Ooh nice though we didn't expect a new driver so soon. The second young man said. That's irrelevant as long as the arcs will is done we will be content. The first young man said as he looks at the people down below and shakes his head seeing all of the pro heroes being celebrities. If only quirks weren't a thing. The second young man said. No Jin if only fake heroes and fake villains weren't a thing then mankind would be at new heights. The first young man said. You're right Hirobe I say you got any info on Redistro's army. The now named Jin said. No but we cannot allow him to live as he supports a Darwinist state. Not to mention Kai is still at large. Hirobe states as Jin nods. I guess the AQMS weren't that through. Jin remarks, and Jin keep an eye on Vulcan and the AQMS while I take a look into Rita Stroh's army. Hirobai said, Hi Hirobai, Jin said as he walks away. Hirobai nods as he goes his own way. As he walks he was approached by a young man. The man is of average height with a slim and narrow build. It is pointed out by himself that his back muscles are not broad enough. He has feathery ash blonde hair swept messily backward with some of the front tuft sticking up in arcs above his head, notably thick eyelashes, and some faint stubble on his chin. He his eyes are gold brown and rather triangular in shape, with two little black triangles just below his tear ducts, making his eyes somewhat resemble those of a bird. The marks around his eyes are naturally innate since he already had them as a child. He has a set of large bright red wings with feathers that gradually lengthen the further down they go. He wears a black shirt with a wavy golden pattern like a ripple in a pond, over which he has a tan jacket with a high collar, the insides and cuffs of the sleeves lined with white fur, and black gloves. He has a square-shaped lobe piercing in each ear, although these are rarely visible as he usually wears a pair of yellow headphones over them. A shaped, yellow-tinted visor protects his eyes. His jacket is specially modified, with two large slits over his shoulder blades, which allow his wings to easily protrude. His costume resembles an aviator's uniform. Who are you? Hirobe asked. I heard you want to know about the Meta Liberation Front. The young man said. I'm listening. Hirobe said as he smiles. The interaction between these two young men would bring be the start of an end of an era. With Izuku. Izuku was in his room resting after today. After Tsuyu decided to stay over for the night. Man what way to ruin a date at least we still have Sunday to look forward to. Izuku said. As he laid on his bed a thought came to him. And where did that progress key come from? Izuku asked himself. With Charlotte. Charlotte was walking back and forth wondering where the keys came from and even now there are reports of more magia appearing throughout Tokyo mostly centralized in the Mustafu area. Charlotte looks at a calendar and notice that Izuku only had two months until the UA entrance exam. She'll need to contact All Might to up Izuku's training. Now she need to inform Izuku of this. He'll need the training but also some ranged weapons. Charlotte said as she got to work on said weapons. Hey QMS base. Show me, show me, show me now. May shouted as she demanded her father to transform into Vulcan. May really, I know you want to see it but. Nigo said until May interrupted him. 
Think of this, if I can crack on the how the henchin thing, the AQMS can be even better. May said with a smile. Nigo facepalmed at this but understood what she meant with this. All right, May, I'll allow it. Nigo said as he presses the button on the shooting wolf key. Bullet. Nigo inserts the key. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E. Cayman Rider. As the shot riser repeats itself until Nigo shouts. Henshin. Nigo shouted as he squeezes the trigger. S-H-O-T-R-I-S-E. Shooting wolf. The elevation increases as the bullet is fired. Nigo transformed into Vulcan and May starts scanning Vulcan and wonders how the transformation works. Nigo just sighs but smiles from underneath the mask he loves to see his daughter happy and he will do anything to make her happy. Anything. Even killing a fire demon who pretends to be a hero. Hey dad, can we get some pizza? May asked. Sure matey but before that. Nigo said as he presses the button on the shot riser. Bullet. Vulcan aims the shot riser at a target nearby and then squeezes the trigger. Shooting blast. Shi. You. T. I. N. Do. Boo. Ra. Su. Tu. Vulcan fires the shot and destroys the target making May smile. Shooting blast. That was awesome dad. May shouted as she hugged Vulcan. Vulcan soon turned back into Nigo and smiled at May and pats her back. Two months later. Today is the day. Izuku said as he has been waiting for this day all his life, the day of the UA entrance exam. Finally today is the day, Izuku happily said, before Katsuki shoves him out of the way. Out of the way Deku, Katsuki said before Shizuka bonks him with her cane. Bakugou stop that, Shizuka shouted. Damn it Brainiac, that hurt. Katsuki shouted as he rubs his head, and there'll be more where that came from. Shizuka said as the two went inside. Well that happened, Izuku said with a sweat drop. It was then Achako comes towards Izuku. Yeah so who were those two? Achako asked. That was Katsuki Bakugo and Shizuka Yuzuhara, both of them are friends. I think, Izuku said as he sees the two arguing and Shizuka hitting Katsuki with her walking cane. Ami, I think we should get to the exam. Achako said as Izuku nods. Both of them went to the exam not knowing what was behind him. TCH these assholes will pay for what they did. The young man said as he accidentally pressed a button. Arsino, UA High Auditorium. Everyone was in the auditorium engaging in idle chatter Izuku was next to Katsuki. It sucked but hey what can he do? And then he saw him at the center of the stage. It was the voice hero, Present Mike. Present Mike is a tall, slim man with long blonde hair, which he wears spiked upwards in a huge tuft behind his head and a small, brown mustache. He has rectangular eyes with concentric greenish-yellow pupils, and he is almost always seen with a large smile on his face and has never been seen drawn with nostrils. His hero costume consists of a black jacket with a very tall collar, upturned and complete with studs, and matching black pants and knee-high boots. He sports tan shoulder pads and a red belt and elbow pads, all studded, and black fingerless gloves. His neck is always obscured by a directional speaker which he uses with his quirk. He always wears a pair of headphones with the word Hage written on the headband and a pair of orange-tinted shades. Everyone say hey. Present Mike shouted. All he got was silence. G's tough crowd. Anyway let's get started with the explanation of the practical exam. Present Mike said as he explained how the exam worked. That it consisted of beating the shit out of some robots which are marked with points and whoever gets the most points will get one of the coveted spots for UA High Hero course. One guy with blue hair and glasses tried to interrupt but a glare from Present Mike shuts him up and provides to explain the zero-pointer obstacle. Okay that covers the bases now in the past we used to tell future students about additional points upon getting their letters. But due to recent law changes and lawsuits against us and yes we were sued. We are now obligated to tell you about rescue points. Present Mike said. Rescue points. Izuku said to himself. That's right young man. In order to get those points you need to help your fellow examines via rescue, first aid if they are injured and escorting them out of the exam area. Present Mike said. The students nods at what Present Mike said. Now then it's time for the exam and remember the school motto go beyond plus ultra. Present Mike said as the students cheered. This is it. Izuku said. As the students cheered the same young man grins mincingly. Let's do this. The young man said. Battle site B. Izuku breathed in and out and was mentally getting ready. The guy in glasses noticed him. Excuse me but I've noticed you were concentrating on the exam but I like to ask you. The glasses guy said and noticed the driver. Izuku didn't notice him and puts on the driver. Zero one driver. Wait are you zero one? The glasses guy asked but Izuku ignored him and pressed the button on the rising hopper key. Jump. Henshin. Izuku said as he scans the key. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E. Izuku inserts the key and transforms into zero one. T-R-O-G-R-I-S-E. To be I a ga rise. Rising hopper. A jump to the sky turns to a rider kick. Whoa it's zero one. One student said. No way. Another student said. I was at his debut. Suyu said. I threw his sword at him. Katsuki said with a grin. Dude that was lucky. Denki said. Zero one looked at present Mike and asked him. Um present Mike I was wondering if I. Zero one started to ask but present Mike interrupted him. Bring out your bike you can't be a Cayman rider without the ride part. Present Mike said with a grin. Zero one smiles under his helmet and takes out the rise phone and scans it. K to rise. Zero one rise phone. Moto rise. Rise hopper. Changing to superbike motorcycle mode. W W W H H H O O A A A. 
was the general reaction at the motorcycle Zero One had on him. I knew at your Zero One my brother told me about you, especially all of the traffic laws you broke, the glasses guy said as he swings his arms. All right then now start, present Mike said as he shouted the last part and the doors open. Zero One gets on the rise hopper and takes Achaka with him driving towards the exam site. The other students looked on and wondered what just happened. Are you kidding me right now? Come on there are no countdowns in real life the exam has already started. Present Mike said. This got the other students' attention and rushed on ahead. With Achako and Zero One. While the rest of the potential students are just realizing that the exam had already started Zero One and Achako are already far ahead. Say Achako how many points do you have? Zero One asked as he kicked a two-pointer. I have 27, you. Achako asked as she puts the gravity back on several robots. I have 35 villain points. Zero One said. Um I think 20 more VP for the each of us will be enough before I owe. Achako said as she sees the other exam takers headed their way. Let's go Achako maybe we can get some rescue points along the way. Zero One said as Achako nods. Achako and Zero One got onto the rise hopper and sped away as the other exam takers begin getting points. With the teachers. Well damn looks like we got a good crop this year. Present Mike said. Indeed as Ashi besides we have such vigorous boys. Midnight said with a wink. God damn it Nimiri can we not get another lawsuit sis. A more modest Nimiri said. Oh be quiet Saya. Nimiri said as she rolled her eyes. Saya was about to fight Nimiri. Until a small voice stopped them. I believe we should see how the potential students do. The small voice said making the Kayama sisters stop. Yes Nezu. The Kayama sisters said at the same time. Nezu is a stout man who appears to be a possible combination of several different animals, including a dog, a mouse, and a bear, which would make him a chimera. He has the head of a mouse with circular black eyes, a large scar over the right one and relatively rectangular-shaped ears with pale pink inside slanting outwards from the top of his head, and an elongated muzzle with a small round nose. His fur is white and has large, dog-like paws with pink pads and a thin tail like that of a cat. He sports a white dress shirt, a dark red tie around his neck, a black double-breasted waistcoat and matching dress pants. He wears orange lace-up sneakers with incredibly thick soles which seem to be quite large on him. Now calm down you two, Nezu said. Well I can say that with the appearance of Zero One this will be epic. As Ashi shouted. Well I can saw hey who's that? Saya said as she points at the young man who was beating up some robots. Oh he's Kaido Sento say wasn't he part of Plasma Man class? Kanishiyama Akasamento said. Oh he is but why is here? Nezu wondered. If I recall he was extremely angry at Aizawa San when he and the others were expelled. Chiyo Shuzenji also known as Recovery Girl said. I hope he can pass and remain this time around. As Ashi said. Still isn't he a little old for high school? Nimiri said. If he does well we can ha wait a second what's that he's holding. Sekajiro Kan also known as Vlad King said as he notices a Zetsumarizer and a Zetsumarize key. Wait a darn sec isn't that one of those Zetsuki things? Snipe said. With Kaido. Damn it I need more points I guess I'll need to use it after all. Kaido said as he holds the Zetsumarizer. He puts on the riser. Z-E-T-S-U-M-E-R-I-S-E-R. -E -E okay let's do this. Kaido said as he presses the button on the Zetsumarize key. Arsino. Okay then. Z-E-T-S-U-M-E-H-E-N-S-H-I-N. Kaido shouted as he inserts the key. Z-E-T-S-U-M-E-R-I-S-E. R R R R A A A H H H. Kaido shouts as he transforms into a mechanical humanoid Arsenoitherium. Kaido felt amazing and he felt great but damn the power he felt as the Arsino Magia is great. Now let's get started. Kaido said as he destroyed more robots. Keishio or the Arsino Magia was amazed at the power he released. Now let's turn up the heat. Kaido said as he hits the side of the riser. Z S U M E T S U Nova. Lightning surrounded the Arsino Magia's horns and charges at a three-pointer destroying it. He didn't look it but Kaido was grinning. With the teachers, well that was exciting, Nezu said with a grin. A very skinny man with sharp, angular features and long limbs, his neck long and his eyebrows absent. He possesses a large scar that covers most of the left side of his chest, and it is not uncommon for him to spout blood from his mouth when excited or surprised. He is also wears baggy clothing. Ah uh, shouldn't we stop him? Toshinori Yagi Akko All Might said. Well he's not attacking the other examines so yeah, Nezu said with a shrug. Besides if something should happen Zero One will handle it. Hazashi said. I suppose so. Toshinori said as Nezu went towards a button. Now it was time for the next step don't you think? Nezu said with a grin as he pushes a button. With Zero One. Zero One had just finished rescuing another student. Zero One soon felt the ground shook and that when Zero One saw the Zero Pointer. Oh crap that's a big robot. Zero One said as he tries to leave until he hears something. Oh help. Achako said as she is pinned down by some rocks. Oh C-H-A-K-O. Zero One shouted as he runs towards Achako and the Zero Pointer. Zero One started to clear the rubble and as soon as he frees Achako. He carries her, bridal style. Izuku what are you doing? Achako said with a giant blush, getting us out of here. Zero One said as they both ran for it. But the Zero Pointer ran after them and was closing in. Zero One then saw the glasses guy. He knew that he can help. Hey glasses guy. Zero One shouted getting his attention. What is it? The glasses guys asked. 
Take her to recovery girl while I lead away the zero pointer. Zero one said as the glasses guy took Achako to the nurse while he gets the zero pointer attention. Hey you bucket of bolts over here. Zero one shouted as the zero pointer turned towards. But just as the robot was about to go to him it stopped. Zero one was confused until he saw a mechanical humanoid arsenoitherium holding down the zero pointer with lightning. He thought it was just his quirk until he saw the Zetsumerizer. Imagine, Zero One exclaimed. Hurry up and destroy this thing I don't know how long I hold this thing down. Kaido said as Zero One nods. Okay then. Zero One said as he hits the side of his driver. Rising impact. Ra, I, Zai, and, Gu, I, and, Pa, Tu, Tu. Zero One jumps into the air and performs the rider kick thus destroying the Zero Pointer. Rising impact. Zero One stood up and was about to face the Magia. Until, time's up is as she shouted as Kaido removes the Zetsumerai's key from the riser. Well that happened I hope I managed to pass. Kaido said as he went home. Zero One turns back into Izuku and went to see Achako. The glasses guy looked at the destroyed Zero Pointer and thought. The glasses guy thought as he went back home himself. A week later, Midori Apartments. All of the tenants along with Nko and Iri waited for the test results to get into UA. The silence was tense as everyone was about to open the letters until Izuku spoke. I want everyone to know that regardless of the results we can stay friends. Right? Izuku asked as everyone in the room spoke. Of course Izuku. Achako said. Yeah Midoriya-chan. Itsuka said. Indeed Midoriya-sen let the Lord guide our path. Ibarra said. Jirota nods as both Kirishima and Testu Testu voice their agreements. Toru and Ajirio nod as well. Yeah I'd be surprised if you didn't pass. Denki said. For once I agree with Jamming Wei. Jiro said as she agrees with Kaminari. I'm shroom you'll be fine. Kinoko said. Pund. Are mushroom puns going to be a thing with you Kino-chan? Mina asked as Kanoko gave her a knowing grin. I say we open them up shall we? Izuku said. They all opened the letters and a hologram of All Might appeared. Hey there it is I All Might. And I am here to give the results of your entrance exams. All Might shouted as he revealed the scores. Yes I passed. Achako cheered. Woohoo how to the yes. Mina said. Yeah I passed Ajiro I passed. Toru said as he hugged Ajiro. Yeah I passed too. Ajiro said as he blushed. Oh mush yeah. Kanoko said. Yeah baby you a here we come. Denki said. Hell yeah we did it. Jiru said with a smile. Ibarra prayed to God thanking him for letting her pass as Jirota smiled knowing he passed as well. The stone and metal manly bros have passed as well. Itsuka passed well. They. Papa passed. Iri cheered happy for her papa. Oh my baby boy. And Ko said as she cried. Grandma you're going to get everyone wet. Iri said as she went to get a couple of buckets. As this was happening All Might was still speaking in Izuku's letter. Midori is shown and I am deeply sorry for what I have said to you I had no right to break your dreams like I did when we met. You can be a hero though I'm pretty sure someone else told you first. All Might said Izuku and Nko chuckled knowing that he is right. It gives me great joy to say that this is your hero academia. All Might said as the hologram disappears. I passed I really passed. Izuku said. Say Izuku what class are you in? Achako asked. Oh 1A and you. Izuku asked as Achako told him that she's in 1A as well. I'm in 1A. Mina said as Kirishima nod. I guess we're classmates 01. Denki said. What Jamming Wei said. Kayoka said as both Ajiro and Toru confirmed that they're in 1A as well. I am in 1A as well Izuku-san. Ibarra said. Ow I'm in class 1B. Itsuka said as Tetsu Tetsu. Kanoko and Jirota all confirmed that they're in 1B as well. Just because we're in different classes doesn't mean we can't become friends. Izuku said. Soon the rest of the day was celebrated with Katsudan and Machai. Now everyone wondered what will the first day be like. Hopefully no Magis will attack him. Speaking of Magis what happened to the Arsino Magia? With Kaido. Thank for this opportunity Plasma Man. Kaido said. Plasma Man was a tall young man wearing a neon purple battle armor he has purple eyes and neon green hair. Don't worry about and call me Shu. Shu said as he pats Kaido on the back knocking him over. Oh. Kaido said as he gets up. Oh sorry about that. Shu said. No problem anyway I still can't believe that Yue didn't accept me. Kaido said sad about his results. No worries Yue can suck it and I've always told I'd make you my apprentice didn't I Kaido. Shu said. Yeah you did. Kaido said as he smiles. By the way did you bring it? Shu asks as Kaido shows him the broken Arsino's at Sumerai's key and the Zetsumerizer. I did but I do need it. Kaido asks as he wonders why he and his boss would want the key. No pun intended but that set Sumerai's key will be the key to you being a hero. At least Shu said. Really, one thing though who's your boss? Kaido asked. He's the CEO of ZAIA Enterprises. Shu said as he smiles. Kaido smiles he know he's in good hands. Chapter 6. Zero One's First Day. Okay this is the first day no need to get nervous. Izuku said as he checked himself. Harry who is with him didn't believe him one bit. You're getting nervous aren't you papa? Harry bluntly said as Izuku sighs. Yeah I am sweetie am I that obvious? Izuku asked as Harry nods. This makes Izuku sigh again. Don't worry papa Miss Chaco and the others will be with you. Harry said with a smile. This calms Izuku down a little. You're right Harry. Izuku said before he became serious. Harry noticed her papa put on his serious face. Don't worry papa the bad bird man won't get me Mr. Wolfie and Charo one chan will protect me and grandma. 
Harry said knowing full well who the bad bird man is. What a rather who little Harry was talking about as Kai he somehow escaped AQMS custody. At first Harry was sacred about Kai but then she remembered that Kai had no idea where she is and Mr. Wolfie took down Kai if they could do it so can her papa. At least that's what Harry thought. Izuku on the other hand was worried but Nigo told us that extra patrols will be around his home until Kai is captured again. Izuku breaths then exhales. Okay Harry papa has to go to school okay sweetheart. Izuku said as Harry nods. Okay I love you papa. Harry said. I love you too sweetie. Izuku said. The two didn't notice Tachako standing there wondering if someday Iri will call her mama. Achako thought as she slapped her face to wake up. Izuku you ready to go? Achako asked with a small blush. Yeah I am by Iri I'll see you soon okay? Izuku said as he and Achako leaves. Bye papa I love you. Iri said as she waves goodbye. They wave goodbye to Iri as they met the others and they to UA High. UA High School. Everyone arrive at UA and then they are in class 1A. When he got the glasses guy introduced himself as Tenya Ida. Both he and Achako introduced themselves and got to their seats. Soon everyone in the Midori apartments get to their seats as class started as Sei Kayama entered. Hello class I am Kayama Sei and I will be your homeroom teacher for your time here in UA High due to some lawsuits there have been some changes to the school rules and entrance requirements for UA. Seiya said as the class listened. Izuku was just waiting for the moment Kachin would blow up. Except he didn't hear him blow up then he remembered the court order he was not allowed in the same class as him Izuku kind of forgot about that. Okay then now let's head to orientation followed by the guidance counselor sessions then a quirk assessment for everyone here alright. Seiya said as the students got up and went to orientation. Some time later, after a while class 1 was dressed in their PE uniforms ready to take the tests. Alright then now that orientation has been done with now we can get started on the quirk apprehension test. Seiya said, um is the test hard? A grape-headed goblin asked. Not really you know those PE tests you did back at middle school. Seiya asked as she received various answers and nods from the students. Well these are the same thing but now you can use your quirks and thanks to a certain writer the Department of Education finally realized that nobody is made equally anymore and is now telling schools to do those tests with quirks. Seiya said. Uo sounds like fun. Mina said with a smile. Seiya smirks. Yeah it does sound like fun but I need to tell you that this is serious and to make it so the person who scores last is expelled from hero course and no Miss Yeyurazu I mean it one of my former colleague expelled the entire class a few years back. Seiya said making everyone but Momo gasp. Um wasn't that the person that got UA sued in the first place? Momo asked. Yes but he didn't know that it would come to bite him in the ass one of these day now get to it also Midoriya. Seiya said. Um yes Kayama sensei. Izuku said. You'll need to do these tests twice one without the suit and another with the suit. Seiya said as Izuku nods. Um can I use different keys? Izuku asked. Yes you can Midoriya sen. Seiya said. Okay then. Izuku said. As Seiya left Ochako pouted. This is not fair Izuku. Ochako said with a pout. I know but I think it's to know the difference between me and my suit. Izuku said. True but it still doesn't make it right. Ochako said still pouting. What about natural disasters, villain attacks and terrorism? Suyu said. I know that but remember Izuku is quirkless dot 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 and no offense Izuku. Ochako said. None taken Ochako. Izuku said with a shrug. Meaning he's at a disadvantage Suyu. Ochako said. Makes sense but still I'm pretty sure he'll pass and besides Izuku can still be a vigilante until they change the law or he accidentally kills someone. Suyu said pointing out the extremely poorly written vigilante law. Oh yeah I forgot about that. Achako said as she rubs the back of her head. Any who lets work hard all right. Suyu said. The cinnamon rolls nod as they got started on the test they did in middle school. After a while Izuku was dead last and the grape-headed goblin laughed at him despite being only one rank above him. I wouldn't be laughing at him Minta san. Seiya said. Um why he got last place. The goblin now named Minta said. Simple he still has to do this again but only this time with the suit on remember. Seiya said with a smirk. Oh fuck. The goblin said now worried about his position in UA. Okay let's do this. Izuku said as he puts on his driver. Izuku smirks knowing he's got this. 50 meter dash. Okay first test is the 50 meter dash. Seiya said as Izuku takes out an orange progress key with a cheetah on it. He then presses the button and scans the key. Dash. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E. Once this happens the grasshopper appears along with a mechanized furless cheetah that move around Izuku. The class is amazed by this. Henshin. Izuku shouts as he inserts the key into the driver. P-R-O-G-R-I-S-E. Speedy N-A-N-D-A. Rushing cheetah. Both the grasshopper and cheetah combine with Izuku forming into 01. This form of 01 has an orange armor on the legs, chest and face with the faceplate having blue lens on it. Try to outrun this demon to get left in the dust. Okay Izuku on your marks, get set and go. Seiya shouted as 01 became a blur and was at the other side of the track. 1.25 seconds. A machine said as Tenya's jaw dropped. How I just how? Tenya said as he waves his arms. Standing long jump. For the standing long jump Izuku switched to rising hopper and clearly surpassed the jumping length dot 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 and a good ways away from the school. I know what you were all expecting his base form is that of a grasshopper. Suyu said. A young man with messy, indigo colored hair that flares out in large tufts around his head and notably straight teeth. 
His eyes are dark purple with white pupils and are thin and somewhat triangular in shape with no visible eyelashes. They're usually half closed and he has very dark eye bags underneath them. I would say something about a quirk but then I remember that he doesn't have one. The boy said with a small smile. To him Zero One was saying fuck you to hero society. Yeah that just makes Izuku even manlier in my eyes. Ijiro said with a grin. Again the young man smiles at Zero One. Grip strength test. For the grip strength test he goes for punching Kong lifting an impressive 10 tons. Well he just blew my score out of the water. A young man with a scarf over his mouth said as another young man with puffy lips nods. Sustained sideways jumps. Zero One did a bit better than last time but the grape was still the best. He wished he had a progress key based off a crab. The grape guy gave him bad vibes. Softball pitch. Okay let's see what key I can use. Zero One said as he checks which key would help him then he spies a progress key with a Hercules beetle on it. Zero One nods as he presses the button and scans the key. Strong. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E. Once he scans the key a mechanized Hercules beetle appears. Tension. Zero One said as he inserts the key. P-R-O-G-R-I-S-E. Heri. T-S-U-Y-O-I. K-A-T-A-I. Amazing Hercules. The beetle combines with Zero One replacing the armor he had on for greenish-yellow armor for the legs, chest, and face with the third piece resembling the head of a Hercules beetle, with mighty horn-like pincers that flip the opponent helpless. Okay then let's do this, Zero One said as he hits the side of his driver. Amazing impact. I, me, I, Zai, and, two, I, and, ha, huh, two, two. Green energy appeared on Zero One's hand as he tosses the ball it made a sonic boom as it flew towards the sky. Amazing impact. I got to say that has to be the second best toss I ever seen. Saya said with a grin as she shows the scanner she is showing 100 kilometers. The class was amazed but a French looking guy asked. Second best. The French guy asked. You still can't beat infinity. Saya said as she jabs her thumb at Ochako. The French guy shrugged while Lollipop Boy just looked at him. Upper body exercises. Zero One used crushing buffalo for this test he scored a bit higher than the last time he did this. Seated toe touch. For the toe test Izuku used rising hopper again hoping he can touch his toes. But he still can't beat both Mina's and Toru's flexibility. Endurance running. He switched to sparking giraffe just for the hell of it he knew those that hadn't seen him transform into this are probably chuckling right now. After the exercises were said and done Zero One is at third place and Great Boy is the dead last. I'm sorry Mina Sen you are out of the hero course I'll be sending you to G. Seiya said as Mina walking away cursing at Zero One. Now then I just need to pick which student from 1B to take Mina's spot. Seiya said. Zero One transforms back into Izuku as Mina leaves. As that was happening he sees Mirio along with two others. Izuku Kohai glad to see you here. Mirio said. Mirio said I'm doing great and who are those two? Izuku said as he sees Mirio's friends. Oh of course this is Nejire and Tamaki. Mirio said. Nejire is wearing a waistcoat in place of the normal UA. Blazer with her school uniform. Tamaki is a tall young man with rather pale skin. His ears are longer than most, their tips pointy and somewhat elf-like. He has messy, indigo hair, which sticks out behind his head, and thin, tired-looking eyes, partially covered by his bangs despite the fact that they're supposed to be split as to not impair his vision. His shoulders are usually hunched, and he avoids making eye contact with people. He wears his school uniform, Tamaki wears his outfit in a slovenly way. His tie isn't tightened all the way and his shirt isn't completely tucked in as it should be, making it seem as if he doesn't put much effort into his appearance. Hey there Zero One nice to see you again. Nedjire said as she started to ask him a million questions. Hey, Tamaki said. It's nice to meet my senpais well I'm glad to meet you but I think Seiya Sensei is calling me. Izuku said as he went back towards his class. As he leaves Nedjire says. He looks fun but not as fun as my girlfriend right Neji. Mirio said. You're right Miri. Also why did All Might wanted to know about him? Nedjire said. Mostly trying to find a way to apologize to Midoriya-san. Mirio said. You do know that he'll want All Might's head if he ever hears about him being quirkless. Nedjire said. Mirio cringes at this. The fact that he couldn't lie to his girlfriend and best friend about one for all. He had told the both of them about his new quirk night I didn't like but All Might approved. Yeah you're right but maybe he'll forget about it while studying here. Mirio said. Not likely if he is as half of a fanboy as you made him out to be then he might resent All Might hell we should be lucky that he hadn't offed himself. Tamaki said. That gave Mirio a terrifying thought of Zero One kicking All Might's ass six ways to Sunday upon learning that he was quirkless. The worst part of it all. He wouldn't blame him at all. Okay getting out of dark what ifs let's cheer our co-eyes on. Nedjire said. Yeah. Yeah. Mirio and Takami said. With Izuku. Izuku is now in class with Seiya Sensei was now explaining how the school and class would work. She also introduced their new classmate Pony Tsunotori. She used to be in class 1B but was transferred to 1A due to mind as being sent to G. Izuku didn't seem to care about that as Pony. Amizu-san what happened to the ball? Pony asked. At space. In space nothing much was happening and the satellite Z is at its spot as the softball Izuku had thrown was heading towards Z until it hit a barrier causing the ball to fall back to Earth. Back at Earth. Within an artificial island a young woman walking around the island with her father. Melissa so how everything? The father said. 
doing good, Dad. I've been designing a glove for Uncle Seamite's successor, Melissa said, but she looked sad. Melissa is a full-figured and attractive pale-skinned young woman of slightly above average height with quite a round face. She has wavy blonde hair which reaches halfway down her back, two shorter pieces she leaves over her shoulders, side-swept bangs that frames her face, aqua blue eyes with notable upper eyelashes, some slightly longer ones extending on each side and pronounced lower eyelashes. She is wearing a white short-sleeved dress shirt with plaid cuffs, a large bow of the same design on her neck, and a dark raspberry pink waistcoat. Accompanying these are pale gray capri pants, under which are a pair of plaid pink socks as well as a pair of heeled brown boots. She also wears a wristwatch and pink, oval frame glasses. The father is a tall man of an average build, with notable wrinkles on his forehead and defined nasolabial folds and tear troughs. He has small sky blue eyes and short, unruly honey brown hair with two prominent tufts curving outwards from the top of his forehead, a short goatee on his chin and wide-rimmed square glasses on his face. He wears a plain dark blue shirt with a single breast pocket, the two top buttons left casually undone and the sleeve cuffs unbuttoned and rolled up to just below his elbows. He wears a pair of pale gray blue jeans, a dark belt with a silver buckle and navy blue sneakers with white soles, decorated with a red stripe near the toe. Sweetie, are you okay? The father asked. Though I just can't believe I didn't think of using technology to be a hero. Hell, there are multiple heroes in pre-quirk comics that use tech and are quirkless. Melissa said. I mean, can you give me examples? The father asked. Batman, Iron Man, Hawkeye, Green Arrow, some Power Rangers teams and Cayman Riders. Melissa said, I'm guessing the last one is because of Midoriya, am I right? The father said, yeah, I wonder how I can be a hero. Melissa said, wondering how she could be a hero. David, an update of the satellite. A scientist said, yes, what is it? The now named David asked, something hit the satellite, but it turned out it has a barrier and deflected that something. The scientist said, well then, thank you. David said as he heard a whistling sound. A dad, what's wrong? Melissa said as the sound got louder. David looked up and panicked. Melissa run. David shouted as both he and Melissa ran. At that moment something fell on the ground and making a large crater. After a while David and some scientists went down toward and found a ball. Melissa took one look at the ball and said, Hey isn't that one of UAS softballs? Melissa asked. Back at UA. I have no idea Pony San. Izuku said with a shrug. Fair enough. Pony and some broken Japanese. All in all this was a normal day besides the test of course. In class 1B. For Bakugo it was med day it started bad since he didn't see Brainiac during the morning. Then a boring orientation then he had to do a quirk test and he got first place. Now the horn girl leaves and now Brainiac is taking her place. This day went from shit to man Bakugo's opinion. So Brainiac how's your day? Bakugo asked. Then not bad Bakugo. Shizuka said with a shrug. As this was going on two people noticed the conversation. The first is a young girl of average height who has surprisingly large, upturned dusky green eyes with long lower eyelashes and notably long and pointed teeth. Her hair is a dark moss green, collectively reaching just below her shoulders aside from a short clump that hangs in the center of her forehead, and it grows wavier and thinner the lower down it gets. The other is Itsuka, so do we ship them. The girl next to Itsuka said, Um I mean they look cute together Setsuna but I think Shizuka can do a bit better. Itsuka said, Maybe but she look like she doesn't take shit from him. The now named Setsuna said, True, I wonder who got transferred to G. Itsuka wondered, Don't know don't care. Setsuna said as Itsuka shrugged. After that the day went on. Unknown location. So you're going to sell these for cheap? Tamura asked as he sees a Zetsumurai's key in Zetsumurizer. Yep, what do you say? Jin asked. Tamura smiled. Get me a hundred keys and risers. Tamura said as Jin smiled. You got yourself a deal, my friend. Jin said. Money was exchanged and a deal was made. Chapter 7. Broken Idol and Old Rival. Today was another day of UA and Izuku is loving another than meeting other pro heroes as their teachers it was a normal high school. Now it was time for the first heroics class. Izuku was unsurprisingly excited for this and wonders who will teach the class. Soon the door open and Izuku's smile turns into a frown as he sees All Might in his sliver age costume. Izuku thought as everyone was exclaiming about how awesome of having All Might teaching their class. This is awesome. Denki Amina said at the same time. I can't believe the symbol of peace is teaching us here in UA. Tenya said in disbelief. The class kept on cheering until All Might raised one of his hands to silence them. Now everyone calm down and listen closely now today we are going to do. All Might said as he takes out a sign. All Might was silent for a moment until he flipped it where it said the word battle. Battle training. All Might shouted as some of the students cheered. Um isn't a bit too soon for this. Suyu said thinking that this is a bad idea. I think experience is the best teacher for this young Asui. All Might said with a grin. Suyu thought. Izuku thought as he groaned. Now before we head to the gym we need to look the part. All Might said as he pushes a button. When the symbol of peace pressed the button a wall opened up to revealing 19 suitcases. Awesome in our costumes. Mina said excited to see how her costume turned out. Momo noticed that a suitcase wasn't there. Hold on I count 19 suitcases. Momo said as everyone noticed it. They all look at the wall and see that there is only 19 suitcases. Oh I don't have a costume since I carry mines around. 
Izuku said as he holds up the Zero One driver. This got the students of wanting to realize that Izuku is right. Oh, I guess that makes sense, Kayoka said. Yeah, that's true, Denki said with a shrug. The rest of the class agreed with this. All right, then let's head to Jim Gamma to where we'll join Class 1B in the exercise. All Might said as the students grabbed their suitcases with their costumes. All Might stood there and sees Izuku leave the classroom with a frown on his face. He knew that Midoriya was still angry at him. He didn't blame him, he nearly broke his spirit and whoever gave him the driver gave him hope. Now he has to teach him dot 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 this is going to be awkward. Jim Gamma. Both classes are now in Jim Gamma both All Might and Seiya. They were now just waiting for the students. Izuku was the first to come out since he didn't have a costume so he was just dressed in his UAP uniform with the Zero One driver on his waist. Soon the students started to come out to show off their costumes. Yuga's hero costume consists of a bluish-black bodysuit, over which he wears a suit of metallic lavender and golden armor, a chest plate, two spherical shoulder pads, elbow-length van braces, and knee-length boots. His chest plate has a high v-neck collar with a golden Greek fret-like trim, as with the lower diaphanous piece under the belt and the edges of the van braces. It also comes with a long, glittery indigo cape as well as a belt with a golden ring-shaped buckle with a blue crystal, from which he emits his quirk, matching the smaller ones over his shoulder pads and knees. He has straight-angled golden lines running down his baggy pants, a matching set around the shafts of his boots, and he wears a red-tinted wing-shaped visor over his eyes. Mina's hero costume consists of a plain white mask over her eyes, with a purple and turquoise skin-tight bodysuit with a camouflage pattern, ending just above her breasts. Over this, she wears a cropped, sleeveless, tan-colored waistcoat with white fur along its collar, which she leaves unbuttoned. She wears custom-made plum violet and beige acid-proof boots with holes in the soles, allowing her to secrete acid from her feet to slide around. Suyu's hero costume consists of a bright green turtleneck bodysuit, tan-colored gloves with large buckles on each wrist guard, and two matching belts. One above her breasts, a strap at either side going around her shoulders, and one around her waist, little green dots embedded into it all the way around. Two black lines run all the way down her suit, each framed with yellow, and she wears tight black boots with markings in the shape of a V on her thighs, green webbed flippers resembling frogs' toes on her feet. She wears a headband with a color matching that of her gloves, and goggles with dark green tinted lenses attached on either side. Tenya's hero costume consists of a black one-piece suit with a high collar, over which he wears various pieces of armor, all in a pale silver in color, including a chest plate, a metal collar around his neck and another around his upper arm, and metal van braces that extend past his elbows pointed at the ends. He wears a helmet covering his entire face, its sharp bever full of holes to allow him to speak and breathe easily, and its upper piece rounded over his head with two larger holes on either side, two curved horns just behind and a single spike sticking out of the back of his head. On his feet, he wears silver knee-high boots with gold accessories, which are specialized for his quirk, and around his torso, he has three thick metal pipes, attached with a blue band. Achako's hero costume consists of a black full-body suit with a pale pink design down the middle of her torso, two black circles on her chest, and a black rectangle below her waist, running between her legs. There are two more pink patches over her shoulders, both cut off by darker pink armbands that match the thick choker around her neck. She also has circular wrist guards, a dark pink handle on the back of each one, wide knee-high boots with magenta soles and a two-piece belt around her waist a circle embedded into the center where the pieces join up, a helmet with a tinted visor sometimes worn on her head, all of which are the same pale pink color. Itoshi wears a prototype hero costume consisting of the long-sleeve winter version of the UA. P uniform, a dark blue shirt and pants with thick white lines over his upper body and down his legs which form the letters U and A, and a white marking framed by a red line on each sleeve. In addition to this, he wears a detachable mask-like device over his mouth, known as the artificial vocal cords, which aids him with the activation of his quirk. A capturing weapon, the same as the one worn by Shota Aizawa, around his neck, and a pair of green and white sneakers. Pony's hero costume is horse-themed, matching her appearance and quirk. She wears a horse halter around her head with a lead rope dangling from the back, and her outfit resembles a jockey uniform, consisting of an orange skin-tight shirt with paler markings around her chest and stomach, with matching colored pants, along with a pair of fingerless gloves. She wears belts secured around her collarbone, biceps, and lower torso, and boots that not only guard her hooves but also have stirrups attached on either side. Nashurao's hero costume is a plain karate gi, tied with a black belt, its collar partially lined with fur. He also wears black boots with sand blue details. Denki's hero costume, he wears a plain white shirt, over which he wears an open black jacket with a white lightning pattern across his back, and matching pants with two lines running down his legs. He has a single, square-shaped earphone over his right ear, something resembling a radio antenna sticking out of the top. Ajiro's hero costume, he wears two dark red gear-shaped shoulder pads. A jagged sash joins the one on his left to the right side of his belt, which has a red R set into its center, standing for his hero name, Red Riot. Below this, he wears baggy black pants and half cape with a ripped hem. He also sports dark red boots and multiple thick rings going around his calves. 
he leaves his chest bare and wears a wired guard around his face, reaching from just above his hairline to below his jaw, an extra piece going over the bridge of his nose, and some spiked pieces around his mouth which resemble little fangs. Koda's hero costume is a tight yellow suit, only reaching to his knees and elbows, with a large red marking over his torso and at the ends of his sleeves. On his chest, there's a symbol resembling an open mouth, and he wears yellow shoes with red lining. Rikido's costume consists of a yellow full body suit, covering the entirety of his body, the only exceptions being the holes around his mouth, each of his eyes, and his hair. He wears white gloves and boots, and a utility belt around his waist, small quantities of sugar stored inside its pouches. Mizo's hero costume consists of a tight blue tank top, six white markings resembling eyes, connected at the top to a darker, more indigo-colored mask, its design the same as the one he usually wears. He has a belt with another, larger eye shape embedded into its center, this time yellow, below which he wears slightly baggy trousers to match his shirt, two darker lines running down the sides of his legs, and indigo boots. Kayoka's hero costume consists of a black leather jacket, long salmon-colored shirt with several rips at the collar and hem, black pants, and boots with stereos built into their shafts. She also has two small, triangular red paint marks just below her eyes, a plain black choker, and white fingerless gloves. Ibarra's hero costume consists of a plain white robe and black knee-high boots. Takoyami's costume consists of a robe, black, but tinted a dark purple where light hits it, that covers his entire body, only stopping halfway down his shins and knee-high black boots. During the joint training arc, under the cape he wears a dark t-shirt, wristbands, a pair of baggy pants, and a utility belt with a double pin buckle. Shoto's hero costume is a plain off-white shirt with matching pants and boots, with two gold-colored straps going over his shoulders. He has what appears to be a material resembling ice covering his whole left side, even his head although it is detachable. Due to the nature of Toru's quirk, her hero costume consists only of a pair of light blue gloves, decorated by pale pink lines and light brownish gray lace-up shoes. Momo's hero costume consists of a high-collared, sleeveless crimson leotard with silver lines at her waist and around her arms, which is open to expose her skin from her neck to just below her navel. She sports calf-length crimson boots with heels, which dip sharply down in the center, and two gold utility belts around her waist, another, thinner one around the top portion of her chest, below her shoulders. Izuku blushed at the girls' costumes, though it was mostly Achako and Tsuyu's costumes. Izuku thought as he tries to not look at Achako and Tsuyu's curves. Oh Izuku do you like my costume? I wanted my costume to be like 13 but they made it skin tight. Achako said as she rubs the back of her head. Mine's a wetsuit so showing my curves is inevitable. Tsuyu said with a shrug. Omidori's flushed at Achako and Tsuyu's costume. Mina said as she emphasized her bust making Izuku blush even more. I say I believe my costume shines the brightest don't you think Fireman? Yuga said dot 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 wait a fucking moment. Fireman 78910, Yuga what the hell stop breaking the 4th wall do you realize how expensive those are and in fact let me give you an example hands Yuga receipt on the replacement fourth wall. A note appears out of nowhere and Yuga catches it and upon reading it he goes pale. Well a pardon Fireman said I did not realize how expensive fourth wall replacements are. Yuga said still pale after seeing the receipt for the wall replacement. Fireman 78910, no worries at least you're not like a certain degenerate. Fair enough Fireman said. Yuva said as he went back to his classmates. Amidori said I'm still surprised that you don't have a hero costume though I can understand why that is since you have that. Tenya said as he points to the Zero One driver. That's true but I think a costume would be useful or at the very least getting yourself a Kevlar undershirt. Momo said giving her two yen coins. I'm I'll need to think about it. Also I noticed that you're a fan of Irser Head. Izuku said as he notices the scarf. What gave it away? Shinso asked. The scarf it resembles Irser Head's capture scarf. Izuku said. I thought only present Mike noticed that but yeah my costume is still a prototype though I might keep it simple. Shinso said. As Izuku talked to Shinso meanwhile Denki approached Kayoka. Say gyro nice costume I'm liking the punk rock aesthetic you're going for. Denki said with smile. Thanks I guess also don't try to ask me out at least a few weeks into the school year. Kayoka said. Denki felt a bit down but brightened up when he listened to the last part. Sure gyro how about we go out after the UA sports festival. Denki said. I'm okay I'll think about alright. Kayoka said. Denki smiled as he went on his way. Toru approached Kayoka. Hey are really going to take that date Jairo-san? Toru said. Hap yeah, maybe but I'm still kind of figuring myself out you know Denki's nice but I don't know if I bat for the other team. Kayoka said. Oh my well whatever happens I'll support you as a friend. Toru said. Kayoka looks at Toru for a second. Okay I have to ask, are you naked? Jairo asked. Yup. Toru excitedly said as Kayoka gives her a flat look on her face. Kayoka just face bombed at that. Say and All Might were speaking about Momo and Toru's costumes. I know Miss Yairazu's costume needs to be like this but Hagakure san's costume or lack thereof there is no need for it she should have made her costume with her hair. Seiya said as Izuku transforms into Zero One. Zero One looks at everyone as sights lingers at Achako and Su's costumes for a bit. But when he looked at Momo he blushed a bit but he soon looked at Toru's costume and he froze. Agawa I'm so sorry Toru-san. 
Zero One said as he performs the doja position. Um, Zero One, why are you apologizing? Toru asked, confused that Izuku is in doja. Hiss of earthing. Zero One mumbled. Um, what I didn't quite get that Izuku. Toru said, still confused. I saw everything Toru the lens of my helmet pierced your invisibility. Zero One said, head still down on the ground. Everything was silent until... Akai. That happened. Seiya noticed this and rushed to Toru's side. Seiya then asked Momo to make a large blanket to cover Toru. God damn it all I'm gonna call Toru's parents to pick her up. Also do not start the lesson until I get back All Might. Seiya said as she shouted the last part and covers Toru with the blanket and All Might nods. The two of them leave and Zero One got back up. God what did I do? Zero One said. So you saw everything right. Tayoka said as her eyebrow twitched. I did and I'll apologize to Toru when I get the chance. Zero One said as he bowed. This seems to calm Kayoka down. Alright but just to be safe give her some caramel along with your apology. Kayoka said as Zero One nods. I'll do that oh I can also give her something along with the caramel. Zero One said. Yo Kayo I think Midori got it though we shouldn't blame him for that. He probably didn't know that. Mina said as Achako and Tsuyu nods. After a few minutes Seiya comes back with Katsuki in his costume on. Katsuki's hero costume is composed of a tight, black, sleeveless tank top with an orange X across the middle forming a V-neck. There are two dots along the left line of his collar, indicating the support company that designed his costume. His costume also has a metallic neck brace worn with rectangular ends that have three holes on each side. His sleeves reach from within his large grenade-like gauntlets to his biceps. His belt, which also carries grenades, holds up his baggy pants with knee guards, below which he sports black, knee-high combat boots with orange soles and eyelets. His mask is jagged and black, and as it goes around his eyes, a large, orange-rimmed flare shape protrudes from each side. So I'm here to replace one of you extras for the day, Katsuki said with a wicked grin. Turns out Midori Bro's lens can see through invisibility. Ajiro said as he jabs his thumb at zero one. Was Invisi bitch naked or something? Katsuki said still grinning. Everyone stayed silent at that. Katsuki loses his grin. Are you fucking kidding me? Is that bitch retarded or something? Every pro hero with invisible powers always have their costumes made out of their fucking hair. Katsuki shouted as small explosions appeared in his hand. No but Kugo san it wasn't Toru fault but rather her father he was being cheap. Seiya said. Oh so Invisi bitch's old man is just a cheap retard, got ya. Katsuki said as Seiya face bombed. Though he wasn't wrong. Let's get started with the lesson. Seiya said as All Might explain the exercise. The exercise consists of teams of two divided into two groups, heroes versus villains. The heroes have to work together to either capture the villains or recover the weapon. The villains on the other hand either have to capture the heroes or wait out the clock. The weapon cannot be moved under any circumstance. Alright then we'll pick the teams at random. All Might said, before anyone asks this is to simulate on how heroes have to make improvised teams with other pro heroes. Seiya said as she gives out a box. One by one they picked their papers and revealed them. They soon went with their partners. Team A, Izuku Midoriya and Achako Yuraka. Team B, Mezu Shouji and Shouto Todoroki. Team C, Ponitsuno Tori and Momo Yeyurazu. Team D, Katsuki Bakugu and Tenya Ida. Team E, Yuga Ayama and Mina Ishido. Team F, Koji Kuda and Rikidu Sadu. Team G, Denki Kaminari and Kaiyo Kajiru. Team H, Fumikage Takoyami and Tsuyu Asui. Team I, Mashirao Ajiro and Itoshi Shinso. Team J, Ajiro Kirishima and Ibarra Shizaki. Achako thought excitingly. Tsuyu thought sadly. After the teams were formed All Might picked the sides the teams are going to be on. Hero Team A vs Villain Team D. Hero Team B vs Villain Team I. Hero Team G vs Villain Team C. Hero Team E vs Villain Team F. Hero Team J vs Villain Team H. Damn it of all of the people I have to fight. Zero One mumbled as he sees that he has to fight Bakugu. Curses I have to embrace villainy for this lesson. Tenya said. Katsuki gave Izuku a feral grin. Start of lesson. Inside of a nondescript building both Tenya and Katsuki were protecting the bomb and both of them are planning on how to defend it. Bakugu-san we need a plan to stop the heroes. Tenya said as he shakes his arms. Alright then what's your quirk? Katsuki asked. Engine, it allows me go in heightened speeds. Tenya said with pride. Meaning your quirk is useless in this place. You stay here and guard it I'll fight off Deku and round face. Katsuki said. What why we need to worry? Tenya started to say until Katsuki interrupted him. Did you not hear me I said your quirk is fucking useless here. The spaces are too tight and you won't be at full power in this place. Katsuki shouted causing Tenya to be quiet. Tenya began to think about what Katsuki said and realized that he is right. His speed won't be much use in this place so he must stay on guard. I understand Bakugu-san. I'll stay here and guard this place. Tenya said as Bakugu nods. With that out of the way Katsuki rushes to where Zero One and Achako might be. And just in time to all might just announce that the heroes are entering the building. Katsuki grins as he goes towards Zero One and Achako. With Zero One and Achako. Zero One and Achako entered the building trying to look for the bomb. Zero One stops Achako as he turns to speaks to her. Achako you need to know Katsuki is most. No he will attack me while Katsuki and I fight you can sneak away to find the bomb. Zero One said as Achako nods. I got Izuku when do you think will Katsuki attack? 
Achako asked. BBBOOMMM. A wall near them collapsed to reveal Katsuki. Deku, where are you? Katsuki shouted. Achako, run. I'll fight Katsuki, you find the bomb. Zero One said as Achako ran. Observation room. In an observation room above the battlefield, Class 1 observed the match. Okay, I'm calling it Katsuki Bakugu is an asshole. Kayoka said as several others nod. Unfortunately, this Katsuki guy is the rarest type of asshole, the smart kind. Denki said, I wouldn't use such vulgar words, but I can why you think he's smart. He knew that Ida San's quirk wouldn't be useful in this scenario, that is why he placed Ida on guard duty. Momo said, Correct, Yayurazu san, Katsuki made a good judgment call in regards to Ida san's quirk, and Midoriya san also knew that Katsuki would seek them out first. Seiya said as Ibarra raised her hand, I believe Bakugu is only after Midoriya san from what I was able to overhear, he used to bully Midoriya san from his mother. Ibarra said, I know about the bullying, and in fact, there's a standing court order that prohibits Katsuki Bakugu from being in the same class as Midoriya, with some exceptions like this, for example. Seiya said, I see, so he's an unmanly bully, not cool. Hijiro said as he crossed his arms. All Might looked out seeing the fight that is going on. Back in his day this would do the two of them good but since Seiya-san told him about the court order this wouldn't happen regularly. With Zero One and Katsuki. Die. Katsuki shouted as he tries to hit Zero One with his explosions. Zero One kicked Katsuki in the stomach and punched his face. Katsuki stopped this there is no need to escalate this any further, please surrender. Zero One said as he dodged another explosion. Don't you fucking look down on me. Katsuki shouted as he unleashed another explosion. Izuku thought as he dodged another explosion. With Achako. Achako was looking for the bomb while Zero One and Katsuki are fighting. As Achako looks for the bomb she spots Tenya. When she did a thought came to her if Tenya was that means the bomb was there. Achako smiled and she followed Tenya and she found him in the bomb. Okay then now how to get past him and get the bomb. Achako mumbled as she followed Tenya. Achako snuck in making sure that Tenya didn't notice her. Unfortunately Tenya did a really bad villain impression and Achako chuckled. Making Tenya hear her. With the class, everyone laughing at Tenya's bad acting. Everyone expects Seiya. Okay, I should just disqualify Ida san for his bad acting. Seiya mumbled. BBBOOMMM. The building shook, causing some of class wanted to fall. After a bit, everyone got their bearing and Seiya was pissed. Seiya growled as she saw the damage. The side of the building that the teams are at has a giant hole on it. Seiya was about to say something until she heard. Rising impact. Upon hearing that she and the rest of the class sees Zero One performing the rider kick on Katsuki. Both of them soon crash near the gate. A few minutes earlier, Zero One and Katsuki were still fighting and dodging until Katsuki had enough. Okay, let's see if those fuckers got it right. Katsuki said as he extends his arm and pointed at Zero One. Katsuki, what are you doing? Zero One said wondering what Katsuki going to do. Well, I know for a fact that your stalker notebooks tell you that I sweat nitroglycerin so I told the support companies to make my gauntlet store a shit ton of my sweat. Katsuki said with a wicked grin. If it wasn't for the fact that Izuku was wearing a helmet Katsuki would have seen his widened eyes. Oh no that means. Zero One said as he had a good idea what the gauntlets did. That's right Deku get worked. Katsuki shouted as he pulled the pin. Once it happened a concentrated blast of Katsuki sweat went towards Zero One. Zero One dodges the attack but it hits the wall causing a massive hole on the building. Dot 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 holy shit that was better than I expected. Katsuki said shocked at the power of his gauntlets. As Katsuki just stood there Zero One hits the side of his driver. Rising impact. Zero One performs a rider kick and kicks Katsuki. Both of them soon crash near the gate. Ra, I, Zai, N, Gu, I, N, Pa, Ku, Tu. Rising impact. After that happens Seiya announces that the match is over. A few minutes later. Alright then I can easily tell that the MVP is Achako. Seiya said. Momo was shocked that Achako was MVP she was sure that as was Ida-san. Um I thought the MVP would be Ida-san. Momo said. The reason is simple she got to the bomb. Tenya hardly did anything since his quirk was useless due to the tight corners and sharp turns. Izuku and Katsuki caused too much destruction. Which reminds me to after the moron that gave Katsuki those gauntlets and Achako despite laugh at Ida-san's bad acting. She managed to not only to find him in the bomb she also improvised a super move on the fly. Seiya said as Momo sat back down. After a few more matches the school day ended and everyone went home. Izuku went home a bit later than usual but soon got home. Midoriya main house. When Izuku got home he was also carrying a bunch boxes of candy. Poppy you're back what's in the boxes? Iri asked. Some candy for a friend and something for you but I need to know did you do your homework? Izuku asked. Hi Papa. I did it. Iri said. Mom, Charlotte did Iri do her homework? Izuku asked causing Iri to pout. Yes Izuku she did do her homework. Inko said chuckling at Iri's pouty face. Alright then I just need to get this to Hagakure-san. Izuku said as he gives Iri a box of candied apples. Iri's eyes shined as she went to her room with Inko right behind her. Girls apartments. Tora was sad that she had to leave class and school early for something so embarrassing. But she cheered up when she saw her mom ripping into her dad for being cheap dumbass. And now mom is using the money dad was saving for his new laptop to buy Tora. Her invisible suit made of her hair so that it doesn't happen again. 
Her classmates told her about the class and from the sounds of it Midoriya and that Bakugo have a history. Toru hears a knock on her door, she gets up and opens the door to see Izuku. Oh Toru I'm well here. Izuku said as he bowed and presented a lot of boxes of candies and a poster case. Oh thank you Izuku um what's with the poster case? Toru asked. Oh it's something I thought you would like. It's something I believe you haven't seen for a long time. Izuku said as he leaves. Oh thank you Izuku see you tomorrow. Toru as Izuku closes the door behind him. Toru looks at the bags and sees that it was filled to the brim with caramel candies and other sweets. Toru squealed as this. She then opened the poster case and takes out a rolled up poster. She unrolled the poster she sees a picture of a young woman with long brown hair done in a ponytail. The girl's face has brown eyes and freckles and she is dressed in a UA girl's uniform. Toru began to cry. This was her. This is Toru Hagakure if she didn't have her quirk despite of how Izuku saw her. He only looked at her just once and he made this. Thank you Izuku thank you so much. Toru said as a tear went down her eye. Chapter 8. Mighty Namu, Breaking Mammoth Part 1. It was just another day here in Yue High. It had also been a week since the heroes versus villains fiasco. But Izuku didn't mind that what he did mind was the never-ending stream of vultures. No, they are useful for the environment, rats. Nope, he didn't want to piss off Nezu. Roaches that was it roaches were trying to get interviews with All Might and the first-year students until an older student played a police siren to make them scatter. After that happened he went to class where they announced that were picking the class president and the Andita and Momo were vice president and president of the class respectively. Next came lunch where somehow a reporter managed to break in luckily with quick thinking from Momo she calmed everyone down and said reporter was arrested. Now they were on a bus heading towards where they were getting their next lesson rescue training. Everyone was excited for this. Alright class I know you're all excited but please go into the bus in an orderly and no eat of this bus has an open concept so no need to assign seats. Saya said as everyone went into the bus. After everyone was in the bus the students started talking among themselves. Say Izu Chan I say what's on my mind and I have to say the zero one driver is powerful. Suyu said. Thanks Su and yes while powerful it doesn't make me invincible. Izuku said. Still it's powerful but I don't my opinion is valid since you saved my life. Suyu said, Nope your opinion is valid though I have to say there is one key I'm interested in, the elephant one. Achako asked, Oh that one Charlotte told me to only use it if there was a massive disaster or a person with a giant efficient quirk. Izuku said as Toru came up to him, Say Izuku I want to say thank you for the picture I'm really thankful as are my parents though dad is still sleeping in the couch. Toru said as everyone on the bus laughs, I'm happy to help Toru. Izuku said with an All Might style smile. Though Izuku couldn't see her, Toru was giving Izuku a small smile. For Achako and Suyu on the other hand they looked at each other and mumbled about more competition. Well more Achako than Suyu. So we all know that you'll be a popular hero once you graduate dude. Thank he said with a grin. How would you know jamming way? Tayoka asked. Simple it's flashy, kick ass and a big fuck you to society. When you think about it, he's especially giving the quirkless hope. Denki said. Well I can't deny that. But still what good would hope bring? Tayoka asked. Well for one thing it can give people peace of mind and well that's what heroes ultimately do right. Denki is the rest of the class nods. Well I know for a fact is that unmanly guy from our first hero class won't be popular. Ijiro said with a frown. Yeah he's a dick. Nina said giving her opinion on Bakugo. Izuku sighs as he knows that he's a dick. I know he's a dick but from what I heard his parents are forcing him to attend therapy sessions. Izuku said. Hopefully he'll do better with our sister class. Momo piped in. Okay everyone we're here. Seiya said as the bus stopped. After everyone gets off the bus and goes inside. Once this happens everyone saw the place they were at. The facility consists of a dome-shaped building composed of eight main sections, with six of them emulating a particular disaster scenario. Holy shit is this Universal Studios Japan? Denki asked as he sounds excited. Nope this is the SDF or the simulated disaster facility. A spacesuit wearing person said. The spacesuit wearing person physical appearance is unknown. Her costume consists of a white space suit design using what appears to be a puffy jacket instead of an actual suit, a black helmet with white eyes, and a pair of yellow boots. Next to her was Earser Head. Oh my god it's the Space Hero 13 I'm her biggest fan. Achako shouted as she fangasms at 13. Izuku smiles at Achako's enthusiasm. Shinso looks at Earser Head and smiles. 13 continues with her explanation of the SDF that used to be called the USJ Unforeseen Simulation Joint. Oh so Universal Studios sued UA High. Denki said, oh well they only sued us after Plasma Man won his lawsuit. 13 said with a sweat drop hanging over her head. And it doesn't help that this place is built like a theme park. Aizawa said pointing out that the map of the SDF looks just like a map of a theme park. Yeah that's true. 13 said as she rubs the back of her head. Soon the teacher and Earser head explained how the SDF worked but as they explain this the light starts to flicker then turn off. Um 13 sensei is this part of the lesson. Aijiro asked nervously. As Aijiro said this a dark purple portal appeared and three people came out. One of those villains was Tamira he is dressed in a black jumpsuit and sports 14 embalmed hands, all positioned so they're holding onto him onto different parts of his body. They have zombie-like grayish blue color and attached to their base is a golden box with two holes drilled into the bottom. 
the second villain's entire body is made out of a dark purple mist, save for his eyes, which are glowing yellow. He normally wears a very elegant suit with a tie and has a metal brace that goes from around his collarbone to just below his eyes. In his villain costume, he covers himself in his dark fog with only the metal brace around his neck being visible. The third villain is a large, black humanoid monster with a very muscular body that has many scars on it. His brain is exposed on the top of his head while his large eyes are around it. He has a beak-like mouth with an array of sharp teeth. He only wears a pair of beige pants and metal knee pads designed to emulate skulls. His feet and torso are left bare. Now those are real villains, Earser had said as he glares at the villains. Hmm, where's All Might? Tamira asked annoyed at not seeing the symbol of peace. He's not here Tamira, the second villain said. It matters not Kurajiri send out the mooks and scatter them throughout the SDF, Tamira ordered as the now named Kurajiri did as he is told. Kurajiri opened another portal unleashing a bunch of villains and some of them have Zetsumarizers. Oh no they have Zetsumarizers, Izuku said. What do we do I've tried to contact the school but I was unable to reach them. Denki said, shit we need to leave, Saya said as she and 13 guide the students towards the exit. Kurajiri saw the students leaving and he intercept them. Greetings, we are the League of Villains, forgive our audacity, but, today, we've come here to UA. High school, this bastion of heroism dot 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 to end the life dot 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 of all might, the symbol of peace. Kurajiri said as he gives a bow. Izuku seeing this puts on the zero one driver and takes out the rising hopper key and scans the key. Jump, A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E, Henshin. Izuku shouted as he places the key in the driver. P-R-O-G-R-I-S-E, to be Iega rise, rising hopper. A jump to the sky turns to a rider kick. Izuku soon transform into Zero One ready to fight Kurajiri but Thirteen got in his way and told Saya to get the students out of here. But Kurajiri used his quirk to redirect Thirteen's black hole quirk, injuring her. With Zero One, Zero One and the others were now at the gates of the SDF but they were sealed shut. Okay then I Jiro and I will open the gates either you run towards UA and get help. Zero One said. Hubba what about? Tenya started to say until Saya interrupted him. Ida Sen you need to obey Midoriya Sen you are the fastest amongst the class and only you can get help from not only the teachers but also the AQMS, Saya said as Tenya nods. Alright but first we need to distract the warping villain, Tenya said as he glares at Kurajiri. Alright then I need Momo to make me smoke grenades, Saya said. Momo looked confused but complied. She made the grenades. Alright then on my signal use them, Saya said as Momo nods. Oh I afraid I can't let you escape, Kurajiri said as he was about to attack. However Momo and Saya use the grenades and covers the students and teachers. As Kurajiri looked for the students Tenya had already escaped. Then something happened a fist made of smoke punched him. Kurajiri then saw that it was Saya was controlling the smoke. Kayama Saya Quirk, Typhokinesis. Can manipulate any type of smoke however she cannot generate her own smoke. Hey you're too late, Kurajiri was it. Eda will get both the teachers of UA and the AQMS you're fucked. Saya said with a smirk. Well then let's see how your students handles the villains. Kurajiri said as he summoned more gate trapping the students. What the hell? Zero One shouted as he was falling through the gate. Achako and Tsuyu saw this and they rushed towards Zero One's side. Zero One hears the shouts of his fellow student and then darkness. Chapter X1 Hyper Rider Special 1 It was after dinner and everyone was excited to see what other kind of keys Izuku had. They were now at the basement of the Midoriya house which not only contained Charlotte's room but also a training ground for Izuku. Okay Midoriya-san what's the word? Denki asked. It turns out I have two electric-based progress keys. Izuku said surprised that there are two keys that did essentially the same thing. That's awesome man. Denki said excited about this. Okay if we're going to do this we each pick a progress key. Ibarra said as Izuku nods. Okay everyone pick which key you want and bring them to Charlotte and she'll pass them unto me alright. Izuku said as everyone nodded. After a few minutes everyone picked one or in Denki's case two but some opted to not pick any. Okay Denki since you were the one to suggest this you go first and last since you have two keys. Izuku said to which Denki nods. Charlotte hands Izuku one of the progress keys Denki picked. Okay then let's do this. Izuku said as he pressed the button and scans the key. Thunder. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E. A flash of light appeared next to Izuku where both the grasshopper and a yellow hard light hornet appeared next to him. Yep. A hornet. Toru said as she hid behind Mashuro. Come on Toru it's not real. Mashuro said trying to ease Toru. I know but I'm still scared of them because I'm allergic to their venom. Toru said with a pout. Henshin. Izuku said as he then inserts the key. P R O G R I S E. Ra 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 R A I M E I. R A I D E N. D E N G K I. Lightning Hornet. Zero One now transforms into his new form. This form has all the light green armor moved towards his back while on the front has now bright yellow armor. The faceplate resembles a hornet's face and has purple lens while the chest has a honeycomb pattern. His right leg seems to have armor resembling a stinger and a drill. Piercing needle with incredible force. Holy crud that looks awesome. Denki said keeping in mind that Uri was around them. Go Papa, Thuri said. Okay new armor let's see what I can do. Zero One said as starts to get off the ground. Yo Izuku you're flying. Mina said as she pointed at the now flying Zero One. 
I am. Whoa, I am. Well, since I have the form of a hornet, I should have thought I could fly. Zero one said as he flew around a bit. Izuku-sama, I'll set up some targets for you. Charlotte said as some targets were set up for Izuku. Okay, now how to do this? Zero one said as some info went to his mind. Once that was done, Zero One flew around the targets for a bit, then his chest plate glowed and fired a bunch of electrically charged needles at them. Holy heck, that was epic. Denki said as Zero One pressed the side of the key. Lightning impact. Zero One goes into the rider kick pose, and the armor of the right leg covers his foot, and the drill activated as lightning came out of it. Zero One comes down towards his last target. The drill tip kick touches the last target and blows it up. Lightning impact. And everyone looked at all, and Iri looked really happy for her papa. Papa, can you use this key? Iri said as she shows the key she wanted Izuku to use. Iri, how about you let the others have go first, okay? Zero One said as Iri nods. Hi, papa. Iri said with a smile and making the girls squeal at the cuteness that was Iri. Then may I go? Ibarra asked as Charlotte gives Zero One a key of a bear. Of course, Ibarra san. Zero One said as he removes the lightning hornet key and presses the button and scans the key he received. Blizzard. A U T H O R I S E. As he inserts the key a blue bear appeared on his hind legs and touched his shoulders. T-R-O-G-R-I-S-E. Attention freeze. F-R-E-Z-I-N-G bear. Zero One's new form was now encased in a transparent blue armor the faceplate resembling a polar bear and his yellow lens. He also had gloves with holes on the palms. Fierce breath as cold as arctic winds. Well let's see here. Zero One said as he accidentally activated one of the gloves causing a blast of cold air at his face. Ooh I think that key will be used a lot in summer. Nina said as Archako nodded. Dang I wonder if they had a fire version of this key. What do you guys think? Kayoka asked. No clue I was never was bothered with the winter cold. Jiroda said with a shrug. New targets appeared before Zero One and he knew what to do. Okay let's see how they handle this. Izuku said and he put his hands forward, palms open and fired a blast of freezing vapors at the targets causing them to dot 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 well freeze. Oh man that CCCOOLLLDDD. Kanoko said as she shivered. Don't worry Kanoko said I know it was a bit cold but it will be over soon. Itsuka said. I think my vines are frozen. Ibarra said as she tried touching them and one of them snapped off. They are indeed frozen. Ibarra said as Zero One presses the side of the key. F-R-E-Z-I-N-G impact. Who? Rai. Sai. N. Gu. I. N. Pa. Tu. Tu. Zero One places his hands together and produces a stream of coolant that encases the last target in a block of ice. He then leaps at the target and delivers a downward slash with his right arm that splits the ice block and the encased target in two. F-R-E-Z-I-N-G impact. Whoa that's cold. Najiro said as Tetsu Tetsu nods. Whoa. SSS Duo who's next? Zero One asked. We are Ajiro and I wanted the same progress key. Tetsu Tetsu said as Charlotte gives the key to Zero One. It looked manly. Najiro said with a grin as Zero One presses the button and scans the key. Blow. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E. A red hard light buffalo appears and went on the opposite side of Zero One. He then insert the key. T-R-O-G-R-I-S-E. Powerful rush. The buffalo charges towards Zero One only to combine and form into the new armor. Crushing Buffalo. Zero One's new form consists of red armor on the legs with part of the chest armor resembling a harness while the face place resembles a bull or a buffalo where it has two pointed horns and blue eye lens. This charge attack will send you flying. That looks so manly. Hijiro and Tetsu Tetsu said at the same time. New horn buddy. Mina said excited to someone else with horns even though it's part of a suit. Go get them Izuku-kun. Achako said. So Izuku-kun eh? Mina said as she wiggled her eyebrows while Achako blushed as new targets appeared in a straight line for Izuku. Okay then let's do this. Zero One said as he presses the side of the key. Crushing impact. Two. Ra. Su. Shi. And. Do. I. And. Pa. Two. Two. Zero One is charged with energy and once he is at full charge he rushes towards the line of targets crushing them with his horns. Crushing impact. That was so awesome dude. Denki said. Oh I'm next. Mina said as Charlotte gave the key Mina wanted Zero One to use. Zero One pushes the button on it. Poison. When the progress key said what ability it had it sounded villainous. Oops, sorry guys. Mina said as Zero One scans the key. Whoa we'll talk about unlucky Mina-chan. Hijiro said. Seriously. Tetsu Tetsu said. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E. A dark purple scorpion appeared and looked menacing and Zero One inserts the key. T-R-O-G-R-I-S-E. Dangerous warning. Sting scorpion. The scorpion combined with Zero One and got equipped with dark purple armor two small parts on his arms, larger parts on his legs and a dark purple and red chest plate the face plate was dark purple and has yellow eye lens, stung with fear by the power claws. God damn that looks badass. Ouch. Kayoka said only for Toru to slap the back of her head. No cursing in front of Iri. Toru said as Zero One presses the side of the key. Sting impact. Su. T. I. N. Do. I. N. Pa. Two. Two. Zero One punches a target and injects a powerful poison causing the target to break down into a million pieces. Sting I am a PCT. Dot 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 holy shit. Mina said stunned at the power of the scorpion key. Ibarra glared at Mina. Why did you pick such a key? Ibarra asked. 
It looked cool and I thought it was the closest thing to my quirk. Mina said satisfying Ibarra. Uh, uh, who's next? Zero One asked. Um, can I go? Kanoko said as for the key. Thank you, Kanoko-san. Zero One said as she nods. Zero One presses the button on the key and scans it. Hard. That's what she said. I'll see myself out. Mina said as she told her bad joke. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E. A gray horseshoe crab appears next to Zero One. Zero One then inserts the key. P-R-O-G-R-I-S-E. The stern military soldier. Invading horseshoe crab. Zero One's armor changing to gray shoulder pads. Upper leg armor. Gray faceplate with red lens. A little bit of armor and on her right foot had a large spike the horseshoe crab's tail sword. Heavily produced battle armor equipped with extra battle specifications. Wow that looks awesome. Kinoko said. Yeah that looks cool. Itsuka said as Zero One presses the side of the key. Invading impact. I. N. B. I. D. I. N. G. I. N. P. Q. 2. Zero One launches a special blue liquid as jetted from the thorns of each part. With its characteristics, it transforms the enemy's exterior into a fossil-like state and breaks it into pieces with a sharp kick. Invading impact. That was a good kick, Ajiro said with a nod. Zero One looks at the clock and is widened that it was getting late and he need to get Iri to bed. Um, I'm sorry to say but it's almost Iri's bedtime and most of us have school tomorrow we only have enough time for two more keys. Zero One said, Gyro I noticed you didn't get a key. Denki asked, Yeah none of them fit me Denki. Kayoka said, You can take my turn if you want. Denki said, Sure why not. Kayoka said with a shrug, Okay hey Charlotte Kayoka is gonna take my turn alright. Denki said as Charlotte nods. Might as well what was the other key Denki picked. Kayoka said as Zero One gets the key. Okay after this I'll do Uri's key. Zero One said as he presses the button on the key and scans the key. Electric. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E. A golden giraffe appears next to Zero One which makes the get confused at such a random choice. A giraffe that's random. Kayoka said with a raised eyebrow. Maybe his great-grandfather was drunk when he designed it. Mina said. Or maybe he got the idea from a super toy store. Uri said having no idea on how right she was. It was at that moment Zero One inserts the key. P-R-O-G-R-I-S-E. Muscle voltage. Zero One's new form consisted of some golden armor on the legs and chest. The neck has additional armor. The faceplate resembles a giraffe with dark blue lens. The chest also has a high power battery on it. Sparking giraffe. Bursting sparks fly at full force. Well I guess it's kind of cool. Ajiro said. Still kind of weird to use a giraffe in the first place. Kayoka said. I don't care it looks cool to me. Denki said as Zero One presses the side of the key. Sparking impact. Su. Pa. Kai. And. I. And. Pa. Two. Two. Zero One's body charges up until all of the power goes to his right leg where he performs the rider kick at his target. Sparking impact. Whoa that cools. Here he's next right. Denki said as Zero One nods. They. It's my turn. Here he said. Okay but after this it's bedtime okay. Zero One said as Here he nods. Upon Charlotte giving him the key he picked, he presses the button and scans the key. Pocket. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-S-E. A cyan kangaroo appears by Zero One's side and hops around. Okay forget what I said about the giraffe. Kayoka said as Zero One inserts the key. P-R-O-G-R-I-S-E. The fourth dimension of space. Hopping kangaroo. The new form of Zero One consisting of cyan shoulder plates, chest, legs, faceplate with red lens and cyan gloves with light green knuckles. Its pouch contains infinite possibilities. Go Papa kick its butt. Here he said. Looks both cute and awesome. Mina said as Zero One presses the side key. Hopping impact. Ho. Oh, Su. Pi. And. Gu. I. And. Pa. Two. Two. Zero One delivers two powered up punches to send the target into the air. Then delivers a number of rapid fire punches before swinging his arm around and delivering one final punch. Hopping impact. They. Go Papa you're the best. Hiri said as she smiled. Dang you're good. Mina said. Izuku Sama I believe it's time for Irisama's bedtime. Charlotte said as Zero One removes the key turning back to Izuku. Thank you Charlotte. Okay Iri it's bedtime. Izuku said. Hiri yawns as Izuku said this. Okay Papa. Hiri said as the girl cooed at Iri. Izuku picked up the small girl and everyone left not noticing a computer flicking into a red symbol until it came back to normal. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through what if Deku had zero one driver. I hope you found it as intriguing and thought provoking as we did. A big shout out to Firem78910 for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works, the link is in the description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Quirky What If for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.